What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel, guys. What is going on? Glad to have you here today. Had to enter with the infamous screenshot that I actually took when the stream died yesterday afternoon. So I do really apologize for that. We had a internet interruption uh, due to some uh, construction going on at the office for the remodel and all that. So I thought it would be appropriate if I used that exact screenshot to start the stream off. So here we are. Glad to have everybody here today. We have a lot to get to. So if you're just tuning in, you're wondering what's going on, maybe you don't know what I'm streaming today, we've got a couple different things happening. So here is what is gonna go down. We're going to depart where we were going to land yesterday. We're back at, uh, this is not Chavez, it's uh, Cusco, or Cuscus. And we are going to depart as if we were flying to El Alto, which is the airport we also flew to yesterday, Bolivia, really high up, 11,000 or 13,000 field elevation. However, we are going to do an ECAM emergency, uh, emergency ECAM come back around and land. We're going to do either a cargo smoke or a cabin smoke, something like that. We're going to get an ECAM. I'm going to run through the procedures real world. You're going to see this. And it's good for me to get used to this too, because I'm going to be doing some ECAM procedures here coming up in just a few weeks when I go back for my real world uh, recurrent training so today uh, we're gonna walk through the ecam I'm gonna show you what the ecam is doing and then I'm gonna show you what everything else has to go on now what makes it very interesting is an, immer an immediate air return coming back into this airport would be quite tricky because you can't short of your wings being on fire I mean uh, you still have to follow some procedures so you don't fly into terrain now it would probably be probably be handled a little bit different I don't know the real world contingency procedures at this airport this is just something that I'm kind of doing for sim purposes here we're going to come back around we're going to do the VOR we're going to set up for the VOR circling approach back to runway 28 once we land back here in uh, Couscous, we're then going to fast forward. I'm going to reset the sim. We're going to be in Bolivia at El Alto Airport, the one that's extremely high up. And we're going to be taking a pretty heavy load of passengers and fuel down to uh, Chile. Chile. The airport name is Andres Sabella Airport, SCFA. So we'll have a nice medium range cruise to enjoy as we continue down further south and then i think we're going to hit up uh, santiago chile on the next stream and then that'll be it then we're going to cut across and go eastbound and all the way up through uh argentina and all that stuff coming up the north side so that is what we have on the plate today i hope you guys are ready for this Roberto Soriano, yes, the EO SID would definitely be handled in this one. I do not have any access to any EO SIDs or what he's referring to as the engine out uh, standard instrument departure procedure. A lot of companies, when you have airports like this and high terrain and all that, they have contingencies already preloaded in the box for that airline, for that equipment. So when you lose an engine or something, you just boom, engine out SID and you comply with that, keeps you clear of terrain and all that good stuff. So we're, we're not going to lose an engine today per se. We're just going to have... Uh, a smoke or some type of emergency air return procedure that's going to bring us back around. So we're going to have both engines operating to clear terrain. It's probably not going to be exactly how it will be handled in real life. At the end of the day, you know, I am doing this single pilot up here up front. But I really just want to do this circling approach. That is the whole point of this stream is I want to get back and do this circling approach to runway 28 because it looks absolutely epic. The time in the sim is a little after 5 o'clock. So if we time this right, we'll be coming right back around at sunset for the approach. So uh, just a quick shout out to some of my members in chat there. Roberto. Uh, well, not a, Roberto, he's not a member, but he's definitely, he's more than a member. He is a sponsor of the channel. Roberto Soriano, the man himself from Throttle Tech. Guys, if you haven't already, make sure you check out the Throttle Tech video. He is the creator of this wonderful thing right here. The Throttle Tech cam is set up and ready to go. We'll be looking at that here momentarily. Um, let me see if I can fix this real quick. Wait a second. I think we'll be all right. Um, but yeah, so... Awesome to see Roberto here. Chris Super, good to see you. Jeff L. Marco, Mr. Martini, Romulus, Santiago, Anthony Teal, Scott is in the house, Key Six, Blue Bear, Fubar, good to see you. Callum R., Jeff L., and Jeff L. is the one who requested this uh, approach anyway, so that's why we're going to be doing this. Hey, Aaron, what's going on, man? Good to see you. Captain Tango, Dark by Dawn, good to see you as well, sir, and many, many more. So let's go ahead. Is multiplayer on? Can we fly along? Uh, I will have multiplayer on for the second leg when we do the actual full leg, cold and dark, and we're going to fly down to uh, a little bit further south. On this particular one, I am not going to be on Vatsim because I'm just going to be handling the airplane and the ECAM and the emergency air return. So with that said, we've got a lot to cover. Let's get in the airplane. Look at this. I didn't even reel this over here. Bienvenido a Cusco. So it's got a little, they have McDonald's up here. They have McDonald's at this, at this 
up here. This is insane. Really? McDonald's is everywhere. All right. Here we go. Into the cockpit. You can see that uh, Phantom 320 has kind of been doing some work. He's kind of got the box semi-loaded here, but we're going to go through our procedures. We're going to kind of just double check everything, and then we're going to do a fast load here. I've already pre-planned us. We're going to go uh, load aircraft, and we're going to do a fast time, just about seven minutes here. So we're just going to do a quick load, and I'm going to double check everything, and then we're going to come back and... Uh, it should be good to go. So here we go. Let's go ahead and get the overhead. Let's just double check. Make sure our FO did everything properly. Everything looks good. We are aligned. Our, our lights are set. That is off. Auto armed. Landing elevation is in auto. That's good. We are doing a high altitude landing. So we need to turn that switch on here uh, before departure. We'll get that set. And fuel pumps are off. The fire test has been completed. And everything looks good on the cargo panel as well. So the overhead looks set. Is the airplane in, in turnaround state? Um, it's in a pseudo turnaround state. Basically, FO is setting up the airplane. I went and got coffee in the terminal, right? So uh, that's kind of how it's sitting right now. Our top altitude for today's flight is 340. 340 is now set. We'll get our constraint modes on. And let's go ahead and take a look in the box here. So we're departing off 10 on the Ta Tahua. Tahua 3 RNP departure. So if we look at this one here, this is what we did yesterday in the Phoenix. I can turn terrain on ND. You could really see there's some serious terrain that we're going to be flying through here. But we'll just kind of scan this. That's our departure procedure all the way out. And then if we were flying all the way to the destination, that is the destination. That is good. So and just like in real life, we're going to take a look at our secondary flight plan as well. So our flight plan is in there. Let's check out the secondary uh, secondary flight plan init. So we got to set this up. SPZO, I believe, right? SPZO. Is that where we are? We're at SPZO, right? I'm starting to lose track of all these identifiers. SPZO, that is correct. All right, so SPZO, SPZO. Uh, basically, it was cold and dark, and the FO did some of the pre-flight, and you're just finishing up. That's exactly what we're simulating here, uh, American Airlines. That's exactly right. So I'm coming in here, double checking. Typically, he'll leave the second. Well, where I work anyway. Like you know, if if it's my leg to fly, say I was in the terminal, or maybe I was looking at a maintenance item or talking to a mechanic, he'll probably leave the secondary blank because it's my emergency return. What is my emergency return plan? So, our emergency return plan today is going to be the VOR Charlie, two eight. And if you remember, we have to kind of modify this to be proper. So we're going to do VOR Charlie 28, secondary, secondary flight plan. But after Tobus, we have to put in the VOR, which is a Zulu Charlie Oscar. Zulu Charlie Oscar. So I'm, I'm going to modify this because I want to make a procedure turn, essentially. But that right there will match our emergency return plate. If we pull up our Jeppesen charts here, and let's do add, add departure, SPZO. That is set. And I'll show you what I'm referencing here for approach, and I'll pin it. We're going to do the Descent Charlie VOR DME circling for runway 28. So if we have a failure, we got to come back around. We'll get rid of our vectors. Uh, we'll come to the Cusco VOR if necessary. We can do a procedure turn and then fly this inbound, and then it's a circling approach from there. Now, I'm, I'm doing the circle based on a video that was posted from Jeff L. I don't have any documentation. So basically what happens, you take the 130 radial. So if I'm going to put that on here as a reminder, 130 radial, you track that outbound for a little bit until you see the, the gorge, and essentially you do this number right here. Boom right back around into uh, into Cusco. So that's the emergency return plan. That is set. As far as departure, we've already briefed our departure procedure. Let's look at our ground charts here, our 10-9 page for departure. We'll get this loaded up here. We're going to taxi to runway 10, short taxi via Charlie. Okay, so our secondary is pretty much set. Let's go ahead and go through the perf portion of our secondary. If we have to come back around, our minimum descent altitude reference is 12,500. That's what somebody told me they have the, uh, uh, somebody said the, uh, that's what they use is 12,500 as a reference. And the wind today, we have variable at two. So basically no wind, that's nice, zero for zero. Temperature is one five, beautiful morning. Hello V1, 
Did you see the video of the circle approach to Cusco that I sent on Discord? I did, absolutely, and that's exactly what we are emulating right now. So we're that, I use that video as a reference to come back around. So that's what we're going to do. Thank you, man, for your $2 uh, super chat. Bank Echo check right back at you, sir. All right, so that's our secondary flight plan. That is good. Our rad nav, we're going to hard tune Zulu Charlie Oscar. And the progress page, SPZO, we'll put that in here. That is set on our perf data. Next phase, that looks fine. And knit B is where we are left at. As far as fuel for today's flight, we need 11,500. We've got that on board. 11.5 is now set. Let's take a look and see if it is balanced, which it should be. 42, 42, beautiful. Let's get our fuel tank pumps on. At this point, we'll go ahead and turn that on. We'll get the APU ready to go. If you look on the Navigraph low altitude map, you may have the Cusco procedure info. I'll take a look at it, Steve. I'll take a look at it. <laughs> Why is the chatbot lady Australian? I don't know. Just something different. I liked it. Andres uh, has says, "Hey, Captain, please do not do any screenshots of death today." I know what a absolute perfect timing for that failure yesterday, huh? It, was, it would have been the most beautiful approach coming back around, but it's all right. We're gonna do it again today. I think you guys are gonna enjoy it. Plus, you get to see an ecam. Go with me. Go through an ecam. Dave Kenny says, Captain, I'm new. I did my first flight. It was so much fun watching you help so much. Thank you, Dave Kenny. That's awesome to hear it, man. I'm glad you're learning from the channel. Got your first flight done. Very cool to hear that, man. Very cool. This one is going to be a little bit of a fire hose flight. But the next flight that we do on today's stream is going to be much more normal. We're going to load up cold and dark. We'll do everything from the start up. We'll have a nice, relaxing flight down to uh, Sabella Airport. Love that. Brighten up this overhead a little bit. Our APU is on. We're also doing a PAX off takeoff, so we're going to have to use the APU bleed for departure today. So that's all part of our briefing. Everything else looks good. How are we doing over here? Boarding is complete. That's what I like to see. Let's come over here, do our zero fuel weight 23.5 and 30.6. That is set. And perfect. So we got a pretty much a, a standard load if we were flying to El Alto, which we did yesterday. It's very similar. It's actually the same flight plan uh, that I have. So we know it's pretty realistic as far as that's concerned. Uh, that looks good. We'll keep that on that page. Actually, we'll come here for our speeds. Let's do a takeoff calculation. Robert Johnson, welcome back to Commercial Pilot, sir. Glad to have you on board. Exclamation point, a welcome. For your perks on the chat, glad to have you on here, man. Welcome. We'll go ahead and sync the final. We're departing runway 10 on a dry surface. We'll do optimum across the board with packs off. And we'll do a sync live weather. And let's see what it gives me here. Toga required. 15, 35, 35, flaps 1, down point 0.3. We can do that. 15 and 35. And it was a flaps 1 with a... 0.3 down trip. That looks good. We're pretty much set there. We'll start closing up the doors. Let's go to the ground services page. At this point, forward cargo is done. Uh, we can pull the chocks and cones. I've disconnected the GPU, haven't I? I have not. Now I have. GPU can be disconnected. You can clear to pull ground power and air. Probably close the door. And we'll get the jetway off the airplane. When would you do a bleeds off takeoff versus packs off takeoff, or is it similar? Mackenzie, so the performance that you'd get, whether it is bleeds or packs, I'm sorry, uh, APU bleed or packs off, the performance will be the same. Okay, you can achieve the same level of performance. However, when you're at super high altitude, you're going to have some limitations with single pack. So what I've seen, uh, the last chart that I read for El Alto, they were saying that you would only use the APU bleed and keep the packs on. So 
it would depend on company procedure and of course it would depend on the actual airport that you're departing from whether it be terrain elevation whether it's a, a city ordinance say they don't want you running the apu for more than two minutes then you might do an actual just packs off every time so if it was for noise so it just it could depend greatly the main point you need to take away is that whether you do packs off or an apu bleed on you're getting the same performance boost either configuration Preferably, my method, when I do it here in the States, I always use the APU bleed just because it's more comfortable for the passengers. Unless there is something prohibiting me from using the APU, I'm going to use the APU bleed every time. All right, let's go over here. We got a couple of company massages, a load sheet. That's our uh, compliance with uh, EDNO 24 accept. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. 22, cool. Return that. That looks good. Turn to the AOC menu, we'll go back to the flight plan page, and we've got our three minutes. We can stop the chrono, we'll get the EPU bleed on. And let's connect the tug and get out of here. And then you get an APU and op plane, exactly. If you get an APU and op airplane, then you're screwed. What's the time? 22.14 in the sim? Cool. Captain, if I hear the PTU sound when the Airbus is at the holding point of the runway, does that mean single engine taxi operation? Uh, no, Diego, it, it could be, but it just, it, it, that's hard for me to, to know. I'd have to know more information or hear more. It, it could be because they were single engine taxiing and now maybe they're starting engine two, but it would be unlikely that they would start engine two at the holding point unless they were waiting for a release time or something like that. So probably something else going on there would be my guess all right let me set something here I'm trying to fix this a little bit I'm trying to fix my temporary background give me a second that yeah, should be good enough all right, let's go ahead and do a B4 start checklist. Beacons on windows, doors, and slides. Closing arm, beacon on, thrust levers, idle, parking brake is off. Transponder is on, before start checklist is complete. Cockpit the ground, brakes release, clear to push straight back. Copy that, Captain, straight back. Here we go. Just got to the game and I'm wondering how to see uh, the window of view. Exclamation point wing view. That'll give you an idea how to set wing views in all the different airplanes. Uh, this airplane, the Phoenix, makes it very easy. As long as you have your binding set up to move around, you can just move through the cabin and through the cockpit with key commands. You just have to make sure they're set up properly. So exclamation point wing view, it'll get you all that information. There's a nice video done by XP72. He explains it in detail. And uh, that is where I would start, my friend. But welcome. You heard it while taking off, Christian? Uh, that could just because the airplanes, old. they'd need a, little, need a little extra juice there when they suck the gear up. I've heard that too. All right, that's far enough. We can turn out from here. Stop the pushback. All right, Captain, push complete, set brakes. Brakes are set. Clear disconnect, show me the pin out front. Thanks for the smooth push. Okay, with that, have a good one, Captain. Clear to start, disconnecting. All right, let's go ahead and start engine uno, then number dos. If we can hear it. Turning one.
really after flying the fly by wire yesterday I really miss it really miss it why do we never put the THS number in the McDudes? Because we don't do it. You don't need it. It's a waste of time in the 320. Now, some airlines SOP may require it. Mine does not. We don't do it. We don't set the trim by decimal point anyway. So um, in the wide body, it actually does something. There's actually, I think, an auto trim that happens. But for the 320, we don't do it. We don't require it. Now, with FMS2, H2, that may be different because you may start getting a takeoff config warning if you don't have your THS set in the McDo. That also happens on the 321 XLR. But as far as my what I do, we don't do it. I, don't, I rarely see uh, anybody do it here in the U.S. All right, we got a good start on engine one. Let's go ahead and start engine two. I think I can hear it exactly. That nice PTU sound. God, I love having the startup with the throttle tech. It's so nice because I can do everything from the pedestal right here and still look at the wing view. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Is the side stick feel the same as the real one? Yes, Oran. This side stick is uh, is very well done. It's basically basically is the Airbus replica. I mean, I don't really know how else to put it. It feels exactly like the real thing. As far as you know, the tension on the bottom, it's very close. And short of having a very very expensive side stick dedicated to the Airbus, like uh, maybe an FSC or a concept or a cockpit concept, where it's you're looking at spending three thousand plus just for a stick my opinion i think the warthog base is the best way to go i did a whole video explaining all that too on the channel so check that out if you're more interested just wait for that avail light there it is and we're doing a flaps one the departures we'll go ahead and select flaps one pontus Wald, Pontus Waldmerson. Hope I didn't destroy that. Welcome to the channel, sir. Glad to have another member joining the channel today. Good afternoon! Exclamation point! And welcome for your new perks as a commercial airline pilot here on the V1 channel. Welcome aboard. All right, that is good. We're going to leave the APU bleed on for departure. We're also going to get the high altitude landing push button selected on. And let's just do everything here at the gate, shall we? Let's do a uh, pitch trim is set 0.3 down, even though that's not how we set it in the real airplane. We'd be looking over here at these values. Let's do our flight control check here while we're idle. Full left, full right, neutral, rudder check, full left, full right, neutral. Auto brakes max, takeoff config is checked, radar PWS on an auto, TARA, we are ready to go. Are you guys ready? This ought to be a fun one. Taxi light is on, brakes released, let's roll. Do you think I'm ever going to buy an enclosed flight deck at some point? Probably not. Probably not. Juan, welcome. Says this could be an awesome stream. I think so too, man. I've never done uh, this ecam before in the in the Phoenix, so I'm hoping we don't have any issues. But I think we're going to be just fine. It ought to be interesting. This is good practice for me, at the very least. I'm halfway there. You know, the problem with the full cockpit setups is like, you, that doesn't just, that's not just like a USB plug and play. You need multiple computers, multiple power sources. Um, it is a very time and financial commitment that you have to, to, to go on. Yeah, daily I'm in the enclosed cockpit. Exactly. And here's the other thing too. It's like on this channel, we stream a lot of airplanes dude. not just Airbus, even though primarily Airbus. What happens if I want to fly the BAE-146 and I have a A320 cockpit? Could be a little bit of a problem. But I guess you can always use, you know, your other peripherals for that. Exactly. Roberto says, you're going to go and come down and fly my 320, 320 sim. We should stream it too. Roberto, I would absolutely love to. Um, my buddy Mike, who's uh, also got one of your throttle techs, we were talking the other day. We're actually looking at uh, rentals down there and, <laughs> and uh, beach rentals. I told my wife, I was like, hey, you want to go on vacation? She's all for it. So 
If we could find if we could find someone to watch the kids for a couple days, I would 100% do it. I am I'm actually we're really looking into it, Roberto. I really appreciate the very generous offer. Um, I would absolutely love it. I think everybody in chat would love it too. If we go down, do the full 320 sim with Mr. Roberto Soriano. Soriano? Oh, I'm saying that right? Of uh, Throttle Tech. That would be absolutely epic. Lucas or Luca DeVries, hey there. What, what do you think about flight uh, caterers? <laughs> just a general question. Wow, I need a little juice to get up this hill. Uh, just a question by a caterer, Luca. Luca DeVries, I I love flight caterers, man. They without the caterers, we ain't going anywhere, right? Without catering, so you guys have a very important role to play. You know, a lot of people think, oh well, just the pilots. You know, without the pilots, the plane's not going anywhere, which is true. But it's not just the pilots. Without a ground crew, without a push crew. Without caterers, the airplane's not going anywhere. So it's we're all part of a cohesive network that uh, that comes together to get airplanes out on time. So yeah, I, I, I always I like the caterers. What's my favorite airport to fly to? Too many to name, man. Too many to name. All right, we're gonna take this full length here at Charlie. We know there's no traffic. It seems to be getting, it's, what's awesome about the sim is it's getting dark here in the valley, but it's actually still, the sun is still up once we get out of the valley. It's, love the lighting. All right, runway one zero at Charlie is confirmed. My favorite airport is Fresno. Golly, you're killing me, man. All right, let's go ahead and light it up. Flight attendants, prepare for takeoff. Al W's got it right. DFW, man. Go home, leg. Go home, airport. It's hard to beat that one. Ed Reed, what's going on, man? Welcome to the stream, sir. Glad to have you on board, my friend. Welcome. I'm really curious to see what this new ground friction will do when we get uh, when we get some update ten. Look at that golden light in the valley! Smash the like button for that right there, huh? All right, we're lined up. I'll show you an outside view. It's really loud. All right, we are, we're not gonna be doing a lot of outside views. I'm gonna try to handle this single pilot as best as I can. And I'm gonna walk you guys through everything. Right now, everything seems normal. So let's spool them up 50 and get out of here. We are packs off Toga, APU bleed is on. Here we go. Yoga's in chat, folks, here we go. Not taking a screenshot, exactly. Stable. Yoga, Mantoga, SRS, NAB, auto thrust is blue. Man, the acceleration up here is just wild. I'm so used to being, you know, less than 5,000 feet. Thrust set. 100 knots, check. V1. Rotate. Positive rate. Here. Navin. Climb, climb, auto thrust. 
Smoke. Forward cargo smoke. I have control. You can actions. All right. First things first, we're going to fly the airplane. Let's get the autopilot one on. It's going to fly the RNAV departure. Press climb, climb, nav, autopilot one. Smoke. Forward cargo smoke. Cabin fans off. Up to the overhead. Cabin fans off. I'm going to turn on the dome light as well. Agent one, discharge. Agent one, forward cargo, confirm, confirm. Discharge. Now it should take a minute. Now at this point we're on with ATC, Cusco Tower, LAM, uh, or LATAM 357. Uh, we got a cargo smoke declaring an emergency. We'd like to set up for immediate air return uh, into Cusco. Uh, land, uh, or LATAM 357, the resident, speed checks. Flap zero. Uh, continue on the departure. Climb and maintain a 1717,000. Climb and maintain 1717,000. And at this point, I'm also going to set my speed probably to help me get up above the terrain. I'm going to go ahead and select 220 knots now. And we're going to go ahead and continue to climb up with thrust climb, open climb, nav. 17,000 is blue. Ahead. Terrain, check. Terrain, ahead. That probably wouldn't be going Terrain, off. Ahead. Kind of interesting that that's going off right now. Marine, ahead. All right, let's continue with the ECAM. Smoke, forward cargo smoke. Went on ground before opening cargo door. Passengers, disembark. I'm going to turn the sim down. I can't hear myself think. All right, so before opening the cargo doors, we got a deep plane. Okay, clear smoke, clear smoke. We have a land ASAP ECAM. Roger, that means we need to come back around and land immediately, but we're also in really high terrain. So we got to we got to keep out of the terrain first. Status, stop status. Let's do an after takeoff checklist. All right, basically after takeoff checklist is complete, gears up, flaps up, APU is still on. We're gonna leave it on right now and uh, help us with a little bit of performance and everything else is good. After takeoff checklist is complete. So at this point, I need to start setting up for a immediate air return. This is where the cockpit duties are really gonna split. Somebody's gonna be plugging away at the box and somebody else is gonna be, uh, is gonna be working with ATC and flying the airplane. So I got to do both roles, but here we go. We're leveling at 17,000. I'm going to go ahead and select heading 135 for now. And we're going to go secondary, activate secondary. Okay, so our secondary has been activated. And uh, let's jam 357, uh, Kusku control, turn right, heading 160. I'll make it 170. 170 for uh, let's jam 357. All right, so we're 170 status. All right, read status. Uh, went on ground before we open any doors. We got to disembark, so we'll probably uh, we'll consider an evacuation as well. In op systems, the left and right cabin fans are in op. The forward cargo vent is in op. All right, clear status. Clear status. All right, let's go ahead and continue our right turn. Let's have 357. Continue right turn, heading two two zero. When able, proceed direct to Zulu Charlie Oscar VR. All right, direct to Zulu Charlie Oscar for Latam 357. That looks good. We're going to go ahead and insert that. Now, in order to make this a procedure turn on the chart, we have to make this a hold. So I'm going to make this a hold here. Uh, I know it's going to be left turns. It's going to be 10 mile legs. Now, this is something that you really wouldn't be doing, but because I'm, I want to make this match the uh, chart over here, we're going to kind of do a little sim, simism stuff here. All right, the inbound course is 112 degrees at the VOR, so let's go ahead and dial in 112. 112. Now, if I go to plan mode, we're going to insert that. And I zoom out a little bit, you can see we've now basically entered this hold, which matches the chart. We have to do a procedure turn because we're coming in from this angle here at 17,000 feet. But that looks good, that is set. Uh, we're turning inbound to the VOR. We're at 17,220 knots. At this point, I'm gonna, you know, we don't know what's going on with the cargo. At this point, we'd probably be talking to flight attendants as well, saying, do you feel any hot spots on the floor? Is there smoke coming in? Do you smell smoke? Any other information I can get, right? Hopefully at this point, say, no, there's no hot spots. We don't smell any smoke. Like, okay, that sounds good. Uh, 250 knots on the speed for now. You can see now that the agent has discharged. Agent one has discharged. It is normal for the smoke light to remain illuminated even after extinguishing a fire. So that's normal. Even though it says uh, smoke up there, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're still burning. Now it very well could mean that you're still burning, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're burning. And the sun is setting. We need to back it up just a few minutes here. It's 
like 528. That's the juice right there. Watch the sunset. All right, that's complete. Uh, land ASAP, we need to set up a couple other things here. We're also going to activate and confirm the approach phase. 12,500 on the barrow, that is set. After passing the Cusco VOR, we need to track the 130 radial. So let's go to our RADNAP page. We've already hard tuned Zulu Charlie Oscar. I'm going to hard tune the FO side as well. I'm also going to dial in the 130 radial. That's going to be our track after passing the VOR outbound for our return back in. As we're approaching the VOR here, I'm now going to slow to about 220 knots. I don't want to be holding at 250 if I could help it. Matter of fact, I might just do 210 here at this altitude, just above green dot. I probably should do like 215 at least. That is set. All right, looking at the chart here, procedure turn, we're going to come back over. Once we cross uh, the VOR, or actually, we can descend to 14.5 pretty much on the protected side here looking at the chart. So we can descend to 14,500 once we uh, enter the protected side of the hold. We will do that as well. We also need to run some landing data. So let's go ahead and do this. First things first, the sunset. Yeah, there we go. Enjoy the sunset while I run the landing data. Oh, we got a dry runway. We're landing on uh, 28. Apply METAR. Landing weight is 133.4. Enter. Flaps full, medium brakes. I'm going to stop the airplane as soon as possible so we can uh, get the fire trucks to come and inspect. So 4,400 feet, that's good. Let's go medium auto brakes. Let's enjoy the sunset while I give the flight attendants a briefing. Call up the flight attendants, say what's going on. Oh, recorder, good point, Jeff. I'll get that ready. Yeah, it's ready to go. I'm not going to start recording until we uh, turn inbound on the, uh, on the VOR. Look at that sun though, that is stunning. Let's go outside just for a minute. I know I said I wasn't gonna do it. Let's break from the emergency. That is beautiful. The sun set, oh my gosh, look at that. Um, all right, so we have to call up the flight attendants, let them know what's going on. Hey, what's going on? Uh, Captain, we already talked about the smoke. Yeah, we're doing emergency air return. We're going to be on the ground here in about seven minutes. Uh, I expect using, I don't expect using the, uh, the brace command. Uh, we will probably, there is a good chance of an evacuation on the runway. You'll be listening for my call. I don't have any special considerations for you at this time. Uh, just prepare the cabin for immediate return. Copy that, Captain. Sounds good. Boom. Hung up with them. FO is probably also coordinating with dispatch saying, hey, we're emergency aircraft, we're coming inbound, we're going to circle for 2-8. This is our fuel, souls on board, ATC's already got that information. Fire trucks, we're going to roll the fire trucks, everybody will meet us there on the ground. We're going to stop the aircraft on the runway and assess the situation from there. Boom. So pretty much our briefings are done. Uh, set hold speed, we can go ahead and clear that out. We're going to let the airplane do the turn and then we're going to exit the turn. So. Ecam is pretty much done. At this point, we're sitting here. We have really not much else to do, right? We've done the Ecam. We've briefed the flight attendants. We've talked to everybody we need to talk to. So now would be appropriate to go to the comm. The comm is additional procedures that we'll use, time permitting. So I'm going to look up that same Ecam we had, and I'm going to tell you guys what it is right here. So smoke forward cabin. I'm sorry, smoke forward cargo. Uh, applicable to blah, 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 all the different tail numbers. Land ASAP, that's what we're doing. Whenever you get a, rand, uh, whenever you get a red land ASAP message on the ECAM, that means it is an emergency and you need to land ASAP. Forward isolation valve, if installed, if not automatically closed, off, which is already off. Cabin fans are off, okay? Um, now, if forward cargo closed, that's not on ground. I'm looking for, that's the aft. So we don't even have a forward isolation valve installed on this airplane. Okay, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, in flight, went on ground before opening the cargo doors. Passengers disembark. So we have to either evacuate or we're gonna have to uh, unload the passengers before disembarking. We'll just have to see what the fire trucks see when we, uh, when we come back, when we land on the ground. Note, for aircraft equipped with forward cargo ventilation that is not applicable. Um, continued in flight. Uh, we've already talked about that on ground. Basically, we don't open any cargo doors. Cargo vent and cargo heat is in op if installed. 
All right, the comm is complete. All our checks are complete. It's time to fly and land the airplane now. Is a smoke warning an automatic mayday called ATC? Aaron Hastings, I want to say yes, but remember, we don't always say, we never say always and 100% of the time in aviation, but most likely yes. But here's what the giveaway is. Whenever you see this on the Airbus, a land ASAP in red, that is a 110% an emergency, declare an emergency, and that you need to land ASAP. So there is no mess around. And the sun just dipped below, just dipped below there. Stunning, absolutely stunning. Let's go ahead and get some more lighting on here so we can see what we're doing. All right, we need to descend. We didn't descend. I got too busy looking at the sunset. Open descent, 14,500. Speed breaks out. Sending at 14,500 feet. Let's go ahead and extend flaps one. Speed checks, flaps one. Status. Read status. Passengers disembark before opening cargo door. In op, left and right cabin fan, forward cargo van. Check, clear status, clear status. You forgot to call Mayday slash Pan and change squawk. Hashtag fake pilot. <laughs> uh, thank you C2A for the uh, super chat, or the uh, dono there, man. The couple emergencies that I've, I've declared in real life, I've actually never changed my squawk code. Um, I've talked to a couple ATCs with that. <laughs> I've actually talked to an air traffic controller about that, and they said, well, you know, if you're already in radar contact, you mean you can change it, um, but it's not the end of the it's not the end of the world if you don't. Um, as far as uh, the pan pan, I already I already did that. You just didn't hear it. But thanks for your uh, super chat, man. Appreciate it, Mr. Martini. Thank you for the five dollar dono. Yes, indeed, it is smoke 'em if you got 'em, my friend. All right, 2,500, let's go ahead and stop that. Speed out star. I'm going to go ahead and continue to slow to 180 knots. All right, we're getting ready to pass over the VOR. And I'm tracking, I'm looking at the FO's ND here. We've got to track the 130 outbound. So I'm going to go ahead and flip the airplane into uh, track mode. We can get rid of the set hold speed. We'll leave, get ready to leave that. After crossing outbound, we can descend to 12,500. Let's go tiller cam on. And let's go VFE next, flaps two. Prepping my track to 130. And here it is. Let's go ahead and start the turn. Pull. Track. You can see we're off a little bit. And we can descend to 12,500. I'm also going to slow to 160 knots. I need to come a little bit more right. I'm going to set up like a 137-ish. 13,500. Let's do a vertical or an FPA down as well. And we can go all the way down to 12.5. All the way down to 12.5. I'm going to do an FPA of uh, 2 degrees down right now. 160 VFE next, minus 10, flaps 3. Let's go ahead and start the recording. Recording is on. Confirm. And that's where we're landing. Man, this is uh, epic. So basically, the circle is going to take us out over here, right past this ridge, and we're going to turn around and land on uh, 2 8. Absolutely stunning terrain. We're trickling down to 12,500. Terrain is in sight. I'm going to go ahead and come back on my track. How are we looking? So there we go. And I can also see on my uh, Rose VOR, you can see basically tracking that 130 outbound beautiful I'm monitoring the FO side as well let's go ahead and continue to configure all the way I'm gonna go ahead and push for managed speed And at this point, we're going to fly it, so we're going to go autopilot off. Flight director's off. Gear down. Arm the speed brakes. Flaps full. Start the right-hand turn. One thousand. Now, what I, sh I should have done is I should have set the uh, center line fix as well for 2.8 so I'd have a Five reference. Hundred. So 
basically coming down now. We're, we're looking good. We're in the gorge. It's getting dark. This is not approved at nighttime. <laughs> so we don't have the luxury of going around. So we need to get down. Terrain ahead. Terrain ahead oh, check. We probably do a uh, terrain inhibit on that. All right, here's our minimums. The airport's in sight. We can go ahead and continue to descend below minimums. 100 above. If I could have my first officer set the uh, missed approach altitude, that'd be great. But we are we are not going missed on this one here. That would be part of my briefing. I'm like, look, we are uh, we are possibly on fire. Uh, we are not going around. So we got one shot. We'll enjoy all the juice views here in a minute. Keeping that three degree path coming down. Go ahead and start my left hand turn to start lining up looking for that runway now of course in real life this would be much easier because you'd be able to see be able to see the runway that you're turning to i don't have my track ir on dome light off thanks that might make it look a little better well, that's on dim but it'll have to do for now i'm peeking out for that runway there's the runway, we're a tad low. Now these pappies, I don't think they're lined up. They make you come in a little bit high because the elevation really hasn't been changed. Or like they didn't update the pappies when they updated the scenery. So you're probably gonna see some reds. I'm gonna try to hold about three reds. Runway's in sight, we're down to land, clear to land. Auto brakes, medium. Fire trucks are standing by, crash fire and rescue standing by. A slight tailwind, two knots coming off the right hand side. 500. Stable, clear to land. See, if I follow that two whites down, it's going to bring me in way high. About three red seems right on this runway. It's still looks a little bit high, maybe. 100. 50. 40, 30, 20, retard, 5. Spoilers, reverse green, B cell. Seventy knots. Manual braking. I shouldn't have done that. I should have left the reverses out to aircraft stop. Aircraft stop, brake is set. Flight attendant stations. So at this point, uh, fire trucks are probably coming up to us. And uh, they change of frequency to say uh, LATAM 357, uh, contact fire marshal on uh, 228. Call the fire marshal, it comes up, it's like, hey captain, we're looking at your aircraft right now. We can actually see smoke billowing out of the aircraft. Um, uh, we'd have to do an, evac do an evacuation, but it's not really simulated, so we're not gonna go through the full evac. Unless, do you guys want to see it? Let me see if I got my evac checklist here. Hold on. You guys want to see an e Let's do an evac real quick. So I'll probably have to do it in the sim. Let me just get the actual checklist. So at this point, let's just say a yeah, fire marshal came up to the aircraft and he said, uh, hey, Captain, yeah, we see smoke billowing out the uh, out of your cargo port. We suggest that you evacuate the aircraft. Okay, at that point, um, it's uh, evacuate, evacuate, evacuate. We'll do the emergency evacuation checklist. So before we actually command an evacuation, we've got to do the checklist, right? So aircraft parking brake. Now this is a dance between uh, FO and captain, depending on where you work for, but uh, you'd be two people running this checklist. So it'd be a lot smoother than just me, but I'll kind of go through it for you right now. So aircraft parking brake, stop on, it is stop on. Crew pre-A, flight attendant stations. We've already done that. ATC has been notified. Tower of LATAM 357, we're evacuating on the runway. Delta P, if manned cabin pressure mode has been used, it has not, does not apply. Engine master, one and two off. Confirm engine one, confirm engine two, off. Fire push buttons, engine and APU, push. Engine fire push buttons, engine and APU. Engine one, engine two, APU, push. Uh, and we should have the dome light on. It is on, it just looked kind of dark. Uh, okay. Agents, engine and APU, if necessary, we discharge them. We don't have any fire in the engines, it's not necessary. If evacuation required is, evacuate, 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 and the evac command push button is turned on. So that is up here. Evacuate, evacuate, evacuate. And actually on here we have, confirm. 
and then I, all the doors would open and slides would open, and then you'd be evacuating the aircraft. There you go. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is your evac and emergency uh, emergency air return. I can go ahead and stop the recording. Oh boy, I probably uh, messed that up because I shut down the airplane, huh? There you go. Th and you can see the spoilers, are they leaking down? I think they're starting to leak down a little bit. That's pretty cool. All right. That's annoying AF, so let's go ahead and turn that off. Or that off. But there you go. That's, that is an evacuation. So, let's go ahead and set up for a replay, though. <laughs> Looks easy, yeah. Jeez. Guys, if you enjoyed that, smash down the like button for emergency air return and evacuation. And let's do a panel state and... Uh, Let's go ahead and set engine masters up. Flaps are full, parking brakes set, cool. Let's go ahead and do uh, ready state. And activate. Let's get the airplane back fired up. <laughs> so there you go. Robert, this says textbook emergency. Thank you, sir. Yeah, well, it was... Uh, it was definitely good for me to go through that again, but uh, hopefully that, that would suffice for a single pilot here while streaming. But I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, hold on, my wife's asked me if I want lunch. I'm going to need lunch for our next leg. So that is just the beginning flight today. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Thank you, Roberto, for hanging out and enjoying that and watching that with us all. Got to see the throttle tech in live action going through the evac here. I'm going to set you guys up for the replay now. Basically, I don't know if... Oh, you know what? It probably... I think everything's all messed up here. Hold on. Let's do this. Let's do that. Um, boom. All the lights are on. That's still set. And engines are on. The spoilers are semi up, but they're kind of messed up. That's right. Let's see what the replay does. sunset down a little bit that golden hour Whew, I need some water can we get a quick turnaround time is money here in Hastings yeah when's my next flight out are we still going to El Alto we are we are we are still going uh, to El Alto, I'm going to reset the sim, do a quick reload. I've actually got the flight plan already filed for VATSIM. I will be on VATSIM. We'll be flying Sky Airways, which is call sign AeroSky. We're going to be headed down to, uh, I can't remember the name of the airport, but it should be a lot of fun. So I hope you guys stick around for that. Smash the like button if you like seeing this type of stuff here so that lets me know if I want to keep doing it or not. Probably going to be seeing some more emergency simulation here very soon, especially as I get ready to head into the sim for my annual or my six-month uh, recurrent checkup. So... Yeah, that's all jacked up up there. We'll stay out here. We'll watch this here. Jeremy Matthews says, really enjoy the emergency ops and seeing what happens. Keep up the great work. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Appreciate your continued support, my friend. Max Rank, 30 months. He says, I didn't realize it was this long. What a journey. Max Rank, 30 months. Goodness, it has been a long time, man. 30 months. I cannot thank you enough for your support on the channel. I hope you uh, are enjoying the content. Hope you get your uh, your sim and your stick uh, feeling a little bit better. I know it was about, you said it was too twitchy, but it might just be because you're used to that FSX stuff. But uh, glad to have you on for the ride, man. I really appreciate your support throughout the years. And uh, thank you for your continued support. Jeff says, it looks just like it did in real life. Jeff, you were sitting right about here, weren't you? This is Jeff's view. I need emergency food. Yeah. Nice screenshot. Thank you. Jimmy said, uh, who gets the jet off the runway after you evacuate? Not me. <laughs> Not my problem. <laughs> Uh, it'll probably, Jeremy, it'd probably be towed. Um, they'd probably, they'd set it up for towing. After the aircraft is secured, they'll probably send somebody up there. Uh, whenever you have some event like that, most likely, the first, well, not most likely, at least in the U.S., the first thing that's going to happen is they're going to quarantine the crew and you're going to go through a drug test. So it probably wouldn't be the crew that brought it in, but they'd probably get another crew out there or a mechanic to uh, release the brakes, make sure it's ready to be towed. They'll hook up a tug and then they'll tow it off. Now, I've been flying into airports 
where there's been an evacuation and it's, we've had a hold for, I don't know, 30 minutes or so. I've actually had a divert one time because we were flying to a single runway airport. I think it was, uh, was Charleston? Charleston single runway, right? I think it was Charleston. I know we did a stream out of there recently. Whatever it was, and we were flying in there and there was an evacuation. It was corporate jet that did an evacuation and we ended up holding forever and then we ended up diverting. So it does take time, Jeremy. That's why that's something that you got to think about, too, when you start flying into these single runway airports like that. You know, it's not just weather that can really screw you up. It's it's a combination of things. It could be weather. It could be an evacuation. It could be a, a gear up. I've had a, I've been behind a gear up in LAX, uh, but that's they have multiple runways. But there's a lot of different things that can that can really come into play when you have a single runway op and not just weather. How many times do you divert and for what reasons? Oh, I couldn't name them all, man. Uh, what's for the reason there are a couple days? Uh, Danny, it, I, it would depend on the extent of the emergency. Like if it actually crashed, like that MD-80, NTSB is not going to move the airplane until they have everything they need. So they're getting pictures, they're getting everything they need, all the documents they need before they clear anybody to remove the airplane. So if there's actually aircraft damage or a loss of life, that airplane is not going anywhere until the NTSB has completely documented and recorded everything they need. All right, we'll watch the one from the inside here, and then I'll pause it before everything comes up. I was right on the markers, though. I was proud of that. All right, let's go ahead and watch this go here. I'm going to go outside view here. We'll turn it down. Pretty sure I put it right smack dab on the middle. Oh, here we go. Screenshot. Just kidding. Pretty sure we put it right on the money. Poof. I'll take that. All right, one more. One more. So something after, or so, so after something like this, uh, you don't have to fly your remaining legs that day, <laughs> Jeremy. No, no, that's a good question. Um, they might ask you, you know, after you, after an evacuation, no. But let's say you have an emergency, and you divert somewhere, you might have to fly out. Uh, they'll ask you. So my most recent emergency that I had last year, I talked about it with my members on the podcast. Uh, they actually asked us after we diverted, "Are you okay taking the airplane out?" And we looked at each other, and I was like, I guess we'll, we'll, we'll do it. We'll do it. One shot, you know. And, uh, yeah, we took it out. But it would, it would just depend. Boom. Pause it. Oh, yeah, right in the zone, right on the tip of those markers. Love it. I know our spoilers and stuff are broken in uh, replay here for, for this one, it seems like. Interesting. But all right, I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was pretty nice. I am going to throw up the Be Right Back screen. I'm gonna use the lav. I'm gonna get us ready to go for a nice, relaxing, normal flight down to Chile over the mountains. So I hope you guys will stick around for that. We're gonna be cold and dork, cold and dork, cold and dark. I'm gonna slow down. We can talk more. I can answer more of your questions in chat. You guys got a lot of great questions. I love interacting with you. I love answering all your questions. So let me reset the sim. New day. We'll simulate that. We go for our drug test right now, and then they're going to deadhead us, which is we're going to fly in the back on a BAE 146 to El Alto, and now we're going to operate from El Alto southbound the following day. So I'll see you guys in about five minutes. Until then, thank you, Roberto. This is great streaming. Good landing. Hey, I appreciate you, Roberto. Throttles worked absolutely flawlessly. And, Roberto, I got plenty more coming. I'm going to be doing some V1 cuts and all that good stuff. I cannot wait to actually start training with this Flightbox V3. Cannot thank you enough, my friend. All right, guys. I will see you momentarily. And, uh, yeah, we'll be back soon. All right, here we go.
All right. We are back. Sky Airlines. Call sign Aerosky. Never heard of these guys before. But we're going to be taking these guys out of El Alto, Bolivia. This is a seriously epic departure. So I hope you guys are ready for this one. We did it yesterday. Blew my mind. Now we have a much uh, heavier load today. So it's going to be interesting getting off out of here. We're going to have to do a full length takeoff as well. AP bleed on, no packs. Should be good. Let me get Fly Live set up. We just teleported. Yes, Jeff L. We, we had the simulated drug test and then we spent the night in uh, Cusco and now we went, to the, we went to the McDonald's over there. We got ourselves some chicken nuggets after the emergency. They deadheaded us over here and now we're going to fly, pick up our trip for tomorrow. We've been released back to the line. So I'm going to set this up. Departure IKO is SLLP. The arrival is SCFA, never been there before, never even heard of it. And we are Aerosky, which is SKU-357. Set that up. Let me see if I can put Fly Live on here. Will you actually come on for me, please? Yeah, look at that. We're about ready to go. Hopefully this time no side stick fault. Yeah, hopefully we won't have that. I think that might have been a glitch that happens with the dead zones. Um, we'll, we'll consider that a previously brief item. We're going to go without it even if we get it. So here we are, a nice fresh Airbus, nice and clean, nothing broken. Love the, wing, love the green wingtip fence and green horizontal stab. I'm right there with you, Jeremy. I saw this livery and I was like, I really like this and this. That's cool. I mean, it's cool. It's very unique. I'm not a huge fan of white liveries, but this one... I like it. So let's go ahead and fire this up. Cold and dark now from the top. Looking at our battery voltage. That's good. Battery one, battery two. 25.6 volts or greater. There is that infamous gyro spool up sound. Gotta love it. Let everything power up here. Scoby says, hi, I got a new PC and I can't download the Phoenix. Do you know what to do? It says already activated. Scoby, so you're going to need to, I think my buddy went through this. My buddy Jungly already dealt with this. I think you have to email Phoenix or send him a support ticket saying that you need a new activation key. Unfortunately, I think that's the only way to go right now. Bioforce One, thank you for becoming a commercial pilot and supporting the channel, my friend. Welcome aboard. Exclamation point. Welcome for your perks here. Glad to have you on, man. All right, that is spinning up. That looks good. We'll go cruise supply on, ground control on, CVR test. Beautiful. We'll go nav one, two, three. Status and position one. It's time to line at six minutes. Strobe is in auto. Nav in position one. That's the fire warning computer or fault or FWC going off. Seatbelts off, no smoking, auto. Arm the emergency exit lights. Landing field elevation is in auto. Everything else looks good up top. Let's do an engine fire test. Engine fire two. And up the right hand side, everything looks good there. Good evening, Captain. Please put that AC on. High, it's 30C in here. Oof, sorry to hear it, crunch wrap. 15C up to where I am right now in the airplane, so we are good. Welcome aboard, man. Mr. Mullen, you passed your CFI check ride this week. Absolutely fantastic, sir. Congratulations. That's a big one. That's an absolutely, that's a big one. So congratulations on that, man. Very cool. <laughs> X-Plane 11 for the win. Rampers fly Microsoft. Oh my gosh, Max. I'm going to have to ban you. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and pull our knit and get our flight plan in here. Good deal. I just wish the sound, you know what, it never, I was always so just happy with the airplane, the Phoenix, that I, I just was kind of maybe sound blind, but after flying the fly, fly by wire yesterday, I really miss, I really miss that, the, the sounds, the, the ambiance of the fly by wire, truly, truly do, it makes a big difference. All right, let's look at our engine page here, we got oil for our flight, let's check our hydraulics, we have hydraulics. And let's check pressurization. It is in auto and it is flashing red because we are above 12,600 feet or at 12.6 right now, which is normal right now for this flight. Let's start programming the box, shall we? Let's go SKU 357, Aero Sky, cost index. We're going to get there. It's 99. 
cruise flight level, we have filed 380. This ought to be an interesting flight because we're gonna fly over the mountains, over the mountain chain, over the mountain chain again, going back west. So should make for some good views. Jeremy says we already had the X Plane 11 funeral yesterday. I know, man, we did. It was uh, there were some great views. All right, we're gonna depart runway 10. And we're just gonna do it on the box. We're on the Usaru One Charlie departure. Usaru One Charlie out to divert. Insert. I love it when a plan comes together like that. Let's go ahead and go plan mode. Let's look at it. So basically, a right turn, and then southbound. That's kind of interesting that it's. Go way out that way and then go south. We may get a we may get a shortcut along that route, but that looks pretty decent. Uh, going into SCFA, somebody please tell me how to properly pronounce this airport. SCFA approaches. Ooh, they only have VORs and RNAVs. That could be spicy. Let's take a look at this at the charts before we blast out of here. Let's see what we got. <laughs> Cost index 99 for the win. I got places I need to be. You and me both, man. I gotta go gas up the boat, get ready for 4th of July weekend. It's going to be a really busy weekend for me. All right. Uh, Andre Sabella. I think I'm saying that right. So as far as approaches, they got a couple RNAVs. If they're boring RNAVs, we're going to do That's a boring RNAV. We're not going to do a boring RNAV. We'll do something better. That's uh, That wouldn't be as boring, but that's boring from the direction we're coming from. What do we got for the Zulu? Uh, would be fun, but that's boring from the direction we're coming from, right? We're not coming, we're coming from Pukta. We're coming from the other side. <coughs> Alright, what do you got for VORs of 1-9? VOR X-Ray, that looks a little bit more spicy. VOR Yankee, that also looks pretty good. VOR Zulu, boring. Uh, NDB Runway 1, I don't want to land 1, but that would be a hell of an approach to do in the Airbus. I don't think ours even have NDBs anymore. We only have one. Um, I really don't want to do a full procedure VOR approach. I guess we got to do something boring. I mean, we just did an exciting air return. So let's set up for the RNP Zulu from Erky straight in 1-9. So RNP Zulu 1-9. And we're coming down the... We don't have a star, which is kind of interesting. Unless I missed it. A, B, C, E, F, R. No? All right. Approach via Erky. Insert. That is set. That looks good. Did I not finish the NMP? Oh, there we go. Oh, you know what? We need to start boarding, too. Forgot. That looks good. I'm going to star that for later. R and P Zulu. Let's go back to the main screen. Straight in, I thought that was for rampers. Yeah, we're going to do a ramper approach. But here's the deal. We'll turn everything off. We'll turn all the automation off. We'll do hand-flown approach. Once I get the runway in sight, we'll turn it all off. All right, 25 minutes till we're off block. Loading the aircraft has commenced. Let's continue plugging away down here. Our flight plan is done. Let me go back to our maintenance. I'm sorry, our configuration. Let's do ahead and set our random failures. Let's put them, oh, it actually saved all. Cool, realistic, cool. All right, so random failures are good. We don't have any manual failures, so our cargo smoke has been cleared. That's very good. All right, let's go into our secondary then. Let's program that. SLLP, SLLP. I really hope you guys get to see this departure. I hope it's so good, it's so good. Yeah, we're at 13,000 feet, Ryan. This is some serious high altitude ops. Cost index, uh, that's for a secondary. We don't care about that. What am I looking at? I got cross-eyed there. Secondary, secondary. We have to come back. We've only got really one chance. We're going to come in on the Loka Zulu 1-0 again. Uh, no star, that's fine. Secondary, perf, all the way back over. Uh, barrel ref, I don't remember. What's our current barrel right now, though? It's uh, if I hit B, 1039. So 132. We'll do 135. Uh, so I don't want to look it up. Winds are calm. Temperature is 15. And Q and H is 1039. Jeez. 
1039 set. Secondary is done to Radnav. I'm going to hard tune the pause VOR for the departure. We'll talk about that here in a minute. The one that's three miles away, not 2,800 miles away. Progress page, SLLP. We'll throw that in here, quick and dirty. GPS direct to our perf. We're going to wait on that. The init B is what we have left to do. Let's go ahead and start looking at that. 1039, 1039, constraint modes on, VOR is on for me. 14,500 pounds of fuel is in the tanks. They are on board and balanced. If you were around yesterday, you saw how much runway we took up with a very light load. This is not going to be a light load, so it should be interesting. Danny says, that I don't know how you actually come up with all these unknown airports, at least from the unknown Cusco, Pasto, Antofagasta, but it's crazy fun to fly along. I agree with you, man. Thank you so much. I'm glad you like it. I don't know how I come up with them either. I really just look at Sky Vector, and then I just pick an airport that is within a decent stream time, and we go there. Or you guys recommend them in chat, and then I, I take a look at them. So 14.5 on the block fuel. That can go here. And I guess we can actually pull a proper weather. So let's come up here and do that. Oh, I typed 135,000 in the barrel. All right, let me let me uh, let me fix that. Oh, geez, that could be problematic. <laughs> Real pilots don't make barrow types. Yep. Real fake pilot. You're, you're watching them. Real fake pilots in chat. Exactly. That's what you're watching. Cusco is a pretty famous for the approach. Same for Pasto. Yeah. I, see, I didn't even know. I didn't even know Cusco. I really didn't. But that's why I love doing these tours. I just learned so, so much. 200 at 5. Few... 1-5, minus 1-5, 1039. Beautiful. 1039 is set once, twice, and three times. Technically, we are in hectopascals, so we'll do hectopascals all the way around. Uh, we don't have any ATC on, so we're going to set our top altitude of 380. And let's go ahead and run a takeoff calculation now. So again, we've talked about this at length. When do prelim takeoff numbers help you? In situations like this, when you're taking off from 13,000 feet, field elevation, definitely gonna run a prelim. <laughs> definitely gonna run a prelim. Let's go ahead and see what happens here. See what it gives us. Flap two, man, so that means we are, that is uh, at this altitude, yeah. Flap two, 124, 125, or 124, 35, 35. That's our prelim. We know we're gonna be about flap two. I'm not even gonna put it in the box though. We'll leave it. So we're looking at a flap two departure. 24, 35, 35, flaps two, down point two. Toga required. We're gonna leave the APU on for that. We'll have high altitude mode on as well. That's part of our briefing. That works for me. How are we doing on the boarding process now? James Johnson, what's up, man? Welcome, glad to have you on board. 150 of 35, or 150 to go, 35 boarded. <laughs> and now we're just chilling. We have some water. Why do we use HG in the US when everywhere uses hectopascals? Probably the same reason we use feet and everybody else uses meters. I don't know. Because we have to be different. We have to be different. Crazy sim brief gives you flight level 180,000 feet for cruise. Definitely not for the Phoenix, Danny. Because freedom, exactly, chaos, exactly. Why did you decide to use APU for takeoff? Because at this altitude, going packs off is not going to be very good on the climb out. So we don't want to be have we don't want to have any pressurization. It has to do with the pressurization essentially. So taking off at 13,000 feet with both packs off no pressurization uh you're gonna run and you're gonna run into some issues when you hit 15,000 feet so this way with the apu on apu will handle the pack load pressurize the airplane or help i guess it essentially would be 
depressurize the airplane because if cabin elevation is going to be at 13,000 feet. So in the climb out, our cabin elevation is actually going to be descending, which is weird. That's 180 degrees opposite of 99% of the takeoffs that I do. So normally when I take off, the cabin is always climbing in the climb out because you took off at a lower altitude and you, the cabin has to climb, pressurization works, right? But since we are so high up already, the aircraft has to work to depressure, to declimb the cabin or descend the cabin, I should say. So it's gonna be pretty interesting. Interesting livery, I know, I agree. Check out this, this horizontal stab, man. I mean, it's pretty, uh, it's, it's pretty neat looking. I'll tell you that, it's pretty neat looking. I'll go 50-50 with you on a Type D sim. United have a couple kicking about. Max, I'm right there with you, man. Let's do it. <laughs> Carta, what's going on, man? Welcome to the stream. No, Carta, we've gotten off the ground. We've done an emergency air return. We did an evacuation. We handled a forward cargo smoke. We've done a lot, man. It's been a long day already, and it's just getting started. We're about... I don't even know. We're about halfway through the stream as a total right now, but we're just... We're chilling out here at 13,000 feet and uh, and hanging out. Is the logo supposed to be reversed on the FO side? Oh, over here? I don't know. No, I don't think... Oh, wow. I don't know. That's interesting. I don't know. I kind of like it backwards, to be honest with you. <laughs> because the arrow is pointing green. I don't know. That's weird. Somebody's going to have to look that up and find the actual answer. That's weird. But kind of cool at the same time. All right, how are we looking? Our departure time, we're already going to be late. I saw that I, we were already behind. Uh, if I go Phoenix, my flight. Yeah, we're already 49 minutes late. We were supposed to be off at 1700Z. That ain't going to happen. So at this point, we're already late. Let's go back to ground services. Probably start closing the cargo doors. And we can wash that on the hydraulic page here. Cool to see that. So they're using the yellow electric pump to close the cargo doors outside. This is, I sometimes I keep this page up when I'm sitting there on the, on the ramp, whatever, we're just waiting on cargo or boarding, whatever. I'll pull out the hydraulic page up. That way I know when they start closing doors and I know they're done, done loading. All right, so that's probably closed up. You can see our accumulator is nice and charged up now. That's good. We have, how many people we got to go? About halfway done. Let's go ahead and start TPU, shall we? That is correct. Interesting, Lauren. That's interesting. I wonder if they just made the mistake like at the paint shop and they left it that way. Kind of like how Spirit Airlines ended up gray instead of blue and white when they had the grayscale livery. Or if uh, it's supposed to like, I wonder how that happened. Maybe the designer didn't know how to reverse it in Photoshop when they were coming up with the logo. So well, I'll just leave it. I know I kind of like it though because you see the green is pointed the same direction, points the same direction. Points the same direction, points the same direction. So I kind of, I like it either way. I, I really think it's unique. Pretty dang good. Pretty dang good. We'll go ahead and start the clock for our bleeds. Don't you have increased fuel burn with the AP running? Yeah, Jeremy, you do have a little bit of extra fuel burn, but at this point, we're more concerned with getting off the runway than fuel burn. So you, know, you go off the end of the runway into the grass, you're gonna be burning a lot more fuel when you rip the wings off than you would by running the APU. It looks cartoonish to you. Oh, their actual logo has a backwards K. Interesting. All right, 
That's good. Let's put that back to the AOC menu. 380 is set. We're waiting on speeds. What do we got down here? Let's go to Unicom. Lima Center is online, but I think we're out of Lima Center. Are we out of Lima Center coverage? 122.8 is on. And we're squawking 2000. That's good. Brakes are set. Cool. We're getting there. 70 people to go. I really like... I'm really starting to like the, uh, the text on the engines. Like that Brazil we had on the, the was it the Latam? When I said Brazil? I never really noticed that before. I kind of was thinking, like, I just like plain engines with paint on them, but I don't know. It's... They sure didn't, uh... <laughs> they sure saved some money on paint. I mean, dude, they throw on a logo and they didn't even paint the whole tail. <laughs> it's probably one of the cheapest paint jobs you're going to find. You sure we need everybody on this flight? You could use the extra takeoff performance. I know, it'll be an interesting takeoff roll. There's no doubt about it. It's going to be a very interesting takeoff roll. I can't find why it's backwards. Maybe it should stand for something. I'm not sure. I, I think it has to do with the direction. Like, maybe it's always moving forward, right? Arrow sky, always moving forward. That would be my slogan, because you got an arrow, arrow, everything's moving forward. Even the fences look like arrows moving forward. <laughs> they did paint the horizontal stab green. I've never seen that in my life. I don't think I've ever seen a painted horizontal stab. I really don't think I have. I, I didn't even know if you could do that. I didn't know you could paint the flight control surfaces. I guess you can. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen painted horizontal stab. Ever. May, might make for some good views, though. All right, there is three minutes. Reset the chrono. Let's get the APU bleed on. So here, you'll hear the air come on, but it's like, it's way not loud enough. Just listen. I hear it comes. Hear it very quiet. Why is the rudder always not neutral at the gate? That just depends on the, the current wind outside. So if there is no wind, the rudder will stay neutral. Uh, but right now, we've got a little bit of wind coming in from the right-hand side. And when the engines are not on, the hydraulics are not pressurized, the flight control surfaces will deflect uh, based on the wind. So that's why we've got our aileron drooping. You see our aileron has drooped down. And then basically, there's nothing to hold the rudder neutral. So what happens is that any wind outside is going to slowly start moving that rudder to the left or to the right. Um, and in fact, we can do something here. I'm going to see if I can pressurize. Hold on. So let's go ahead and close the aft, two left, and the aft stairs. They're probably done. We're going to leave the GPU on so we don't run any extra load. But if I come down here, so you can see we're all drooped. So we're going to have a little fun here. We would turn the beacon on for this. We're going to pressurize. We're going to go yellow electric pump on. And then we're going to go blue override pump on. And now, look at that. We've pressurized the hydraulics and we've centered the flight control surfaces. Look at the uh, ailerons. They're no longer drooped. They're actually properly uh, in their neutral position because hydraulic pressure holds them up. And now we'll go ahead and we'll shut off the blue hydraulic override pump and we'll turn off the yellow electric pump and slowly but surely they will start to droop you see they don't they don't do it instantly it's just over time so you can see here the wind is pushing it just barely see the rudder starting to move just starting to bend over Pretty cool, huh? No, there was no flight control on. 
Oh, Jeff, did the Syrian die? This just the Phoenix sounds. Very sad. I'm very. Yeah, you can see it. And then it goes all the way to the stop. Now, the ailerons will take a little bit longer to droop. And every airplane is different. You know, every airplane is different. Uh, let's go ahead and turn off the beacon. Now that we're done playing with the flight controls. How are we looking? Let's go over to weight and balance. Almost done. Almost done. I've noticed in some of the new 320 Neos that there is barely any droop. Yeah, they're probably much better at uh, controlling or keeping that, that static pressure. I don't know if there's anything else in there, like some additional check valves or something like that. It'd be an interesting question to ask a mechanic or something. But uh, to my knowledge, you know, at, at some point, all of the flight control surfaces will droop if you leave them uh, unpressurized for a certain amount of time. I like the nice bright shade of lime green they chose would, be, would pair nicely with hot pink and highlighter yellow. Ooh, interesting. On the fly-by-wire, the droop is actually different every time, uh, and the actuator resistance is changed randomly. Interesting. So yeah, that would be, that's representative of real airplanes, right? Because every airplane is a little bit different. Some droop right away, some don't droop hardly at all. Some droop uh, non, not, not equally, like one side will droop more, like you have a left aileron that goes down, the right aileron is still kind of hanging in there. <laughs> Jesus, Keith. <laughs> Boeing has hydraulically assisted cables for the flight controls, right? That is correct, Jeff. That is correct. All right, we're probably close enough now where they're gonna be done. Uh, they're gonna say, Cap, we cool the, cool the ground power. Yep, you are cool. Pull the, pull the ground at power. I actually watched this the other day to see just how much it would change, and it, it does. When you load it up, see the EGT creeping up. End speed has dropped down to 99% now. When you load it up, that's just cool. All right, let's go to ground services. They're probably going to get rid of the chocks and cones. They're going to get rid of the GPU. Scheduling my lunch delivery with the wife. Where's the CVR save button? Um, not really a save button, but there's a uh, DFDR event button that you can press right here. You want to mark the tapes. Need to get out of here. Just real life waiting. Lima Center, 2475. I don't think I have to talk to Lima Center. I'm pretty, f right? One fifty at one thirty-three. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We're gonna start both engines up. We're gonna taxi out. Uh, let's look at our taxi brief real quick. El Alto ground ten nine. All right. So push straight back. Start them both. Get on Alpha. Taxi all the way to ten. We have to do a back taxi to one zero. So be a long taxi. We'll start them both. Down to runway 10. Elevation is crazy. Oh, 13,001 on this side, 13,003. 200 feet difference there in 4,000 meters. And that's how it really looks. I was kind of wondering if it was this dark around the airfield. That's pretty cool. That's exactly what it looks like in the sim. Now coming in 2.8 is crazy, look at that. There are no public straight in approach procedures that run a visual guidance provided by a Pappy. That would be a cool visual approach to do. 
We're gonna be taking off 10 though, but yeah, when you see this the scenery on departure, it is next level. Oh, we never really looked at the departure. Usuru 1 Charlie is what we're on. Right hand turn on to Usuru. We should probably look at this here. Speed max 200 knots. So again, we're gonna pre select 200 knots so the airplane doesn't speed up. For the climb phase, we're gonna pre select 200. Right there, done, pre selected, complete. And we're also going to do a fixed ring. We've got five miles from pause VOR. So let's go back to our RadNav page. RadNav page. And I'm going to go, I'm actually scratch that. We're going to go fix info, P-A-Z. We're going to put a ring around it at five miles. So there's, that's the one I want. Five mile radius, boom. So now I know that's where we start the turn at above 13,700 feet is when we start the turn. Perfectly synced up. Good to go there. We'll put this back on the init B page. This is where everybody's antsy. We're like, come on, we want to go, we want to go. Flight attendants are going through the cabin, like, come on, take your seats. It's sloped like a British carrier. Yeah, it is. It's got a crazy slope to it. Oh, this is cool. How are passengers getting off? The jet would just jetways close. Hello, welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. Hi, welcome aboard. That's one thing you get tired of hearing you're sitting up front because cockpit doors open. So like every passenger, every other passenger, depending on your flight attendant crew, they greet them, right? They greet every passenger needs a, has an experience. So you just constantly hear, welcome aboard. Hi, welcome aboard. Yeah, welcome aboard. Where's my, where is 13F? Well, go down the aisle and the 13F will be on your left side. Like, I don't know how the flight attendants have that patient. I, I, if somebody asked me after like the 400th time that day, where's seat 13F? I'd say, find the number 13 and find the letter F. You should be good to go. That's like when you're standing in the terminal right under like the E gates and someone comes up to you and says, excuse me, sir, how do I find the E gates? And you just like look up and you're like, well, E gates, they're right here. But, you know. Some you gotta remember. I remember not everybody flies as much as we do, so you gotta have that patience. But I will, you know, being honest, there are days where I just kind of roll my eyes. Boarding is complete. Thank you. Dismiss that. Let's go. One twenty-eight zero thirty point six. One twenty-eight zero and thirty point six. Boom. That is set. That is good. Captain, we good to close. We are good to close. Close the door, get the beacon on, connect the tug, jet bridge is going to go away, I think, maybe not, there it goes, boarding completed, <laughs> do I have fancy noise cancelling headsets, no I don't, I just use ship sets, they're like Telex uh, 750s or something, I used to bring my own headset when I flew the Embraers, but not anymore, it's just too much to bring around, you know. All right, uh, what did we say? Oh, now we got to do our perf data real quick. Uh, matter of fact, we can do that on the pushback. Uh, cockpit to ground, are you ready for push? Cockpit to ground, stand by. Windows door and slides closed on. Beacon on thrust service idle parking brake is off. Transponder, transponder. Force our check split, cockpit to ground, brakes release, clear to push straight back. Copy that, Captain. Commencing pushback. Beep, beep. That's the horn. They, they honk it. We start back. All right, let's do our perf speeds. Yeah. Have you ever had a high-speed RTO? I have indeed, man. It is a very, very, very violent. I have had a high-speed RTO. My buddy had a high-speed RTO not too long ago, too, and he says that I am absolutely correct. It is very violent. 122, 35, 35, flaps 2. Just what we planned on. We're gonna go straight back. Don't hit the pole. That's about as far back as I wanna go. We'll go ahead and, uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Stop. Push complete, set brakes. Brakes are set. Clear to disconnect. Show me the pin out front. We are starting. Engines one and two. 
Hold on, I gotta, my wife is texting me. I gotta tell her don't drive in the lot because they just restriped it. Yeah, that would be bad because they just painted the parking lot, so did not want her to drive on that. All right, everything else is good. Let's go ahead and start engine at numero uno. Let's do it from outside, shall we? Starting one. I think. Oh, no. It helps if you actually turn the uh, start switch to ignition start. Now we're starting one. If Paz asked if it was 13, have to be correct, there is no row 13. <laughs> True. At some point, you have to head over to China for an Asian tour. Uh, hit up the highest airports. Zoot up, zoot, 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 all above 14,000. Christopher Cook, I did an Asia Pacific tour not too long ago, my friend. I should have done it in Microsoft. We might revisit at some point, but our last major tour was the Asia Pacific tour. Danny, exactly. That's why I uh, had to actually pause the stream because I wanted to make sure she would not drive on it, even though it is marked. <laughs> had to just double check. All right, as soon as we get that avail, we're going to fire up number two, and we are out of here. Should about be about an hour, ten minutes cruise. Should be enough time for me to eat my lunch, hang out with you guys, listen to some tunes, turning two, PTUs kicking over. Jeff, we have to do Kitech in Microsoft. I agree with you, my friend. Come on. Somebody get a sound pack for this airplane, please. <laughs> oh, was there a sign? Exactly, Danny. Exactly. It's so quiet in there. Crazy. Did we lose audio? No, you were just listening to the startup sounds. That's what I'm talking about. There are sounds in the Phoenix. Savages. All right, we got two good starts. That's coming back. That's going to arm. We're going to go flaps two. Flap sounds are very good, though. So flap sounds are good. Flap two. Fun fact, the P2 agent condition is also randomized in the fly-by-wire, so it will sound different between flights. Boris added a ton of samples. You know what? I think I heard... I think why I picked up on that. I thought it sounded different. All right, uh, let's go receive messages, load sheet, that is the final, accept, or is that not the final, compliance with video 150 plus 5 or 6, we added some more people from the emergency, that's good, everybody's on board, let's go ahead, taxi light on, APU will remain on, high altitude landing push button is on for departure, let's roll, brakes released, love doing that, I mean, I don't know why, I, honestly. I don't know why I'm so obsessed with using the parking brake, but it is so fun. So fun to use the parking brake. Let's go. Brake check, pressure zero. A Phoenix gives us louder startup shutdown and sounds for call buttons, we'd be solid. Yeah, FUBAR. I feel, yeah, and they need some like cabin environmental. Oh gosh, see, and sliders, please sliders i don't even do the outside view hardly at all anymore because there's no volume sliders it's just why i love you phoenix i love this airplane but definitely would like to see a sound update Am I a captain or first officer? I'm actually a fifth officer. No, I'm just messing. I am a captain. I did fly somebody just last week, though, that was going to train for the 727. 
I'm like, I didn't even know they still did training for the 727. I uh, believe he was going to be doing some flight engineer training. Uh, it's the second flight engineer I've had in probably five years. I had a flight engineer on my jump seat a long time ago. And then uh, just last well, last week, last couple weeks, and he was going to go train on the 7-2. Traffic. Traffic. Whoa, okay. Somebody is rolling. We'll hold short. Nice departure. Hopefully, I guess he's not on Unicom. Cool. Should I call Lima Center? Do I need to be on Lima Center? Surely I don't, right? All right, we're taxiing onto the runway, so let's go ahead and get all our lights on. El Alto traffic. Aerosky 357. So back taxi runway 10, El Alto. All right, so we're gonna back taxi. A little bit of thrust to get rolling here. I would be under the pause. Okay, thank you guys, appreciate you. I just didn't wanna make anybody unhappy. We need a Piedmont 727, Jeremy Harvey. Oh my goodness, could you imagine? I, that is what I'm really, really missing in the South America tour is the 727, like Aerosource Cargo or just some old school 727 liveries would be absolutely awesome here in the South America tour. I might, if I can figure out how to update my Leonardo Mad Dog, I might, uh, I might fly some Mad Ooh, ladies and gentlemen, lunch has been delivered. Thank you. Ooh, I got one of those pink refreshers. Those are awesome. Okay. All right. That'll be a nice cruise meal. Thank you. Press control F9, 10, 11 to save your view when resetting. Yep, I, so I've got my view set like I do in X-Plane. I just kind of use the same thing. Plus one for the 80. Kevin, yeah, I might, uh, I'm gonna have to get it, I'm gonna have to get it updated. I just, I couldn't get, it said like I had, I couldn't get the right installer, and then, I don't know, it crashed my game. Gotta do some Aerosource takeoffs, that's where they use the entire runway. I was watching that 727, I think it was a 727 Aerosource. Basically went through the airport fence line. Jeez. I live in Buffalo and have MD-82 cargos fly over me all the time coming from Niagara Falls. Awesome, Carson. Awesome stuff, man. Oh, yes, I got one of these super manly refresher drinks now. If you guys were around when they first first discovered them, I'm now officially addicted to them. This one happens to be purple. But they're delicious. I just, you will not see me carrying this around in the airport. They are delicious, my goodness. <laughs> People are joking about sounds of the Phoenix and then we're thinking about flying the Mad Dog. Yeah, I would definitely have to get a sound set. I have to get the uh, FT Sim sound pack for the Mad Dog. I was gonna yeah, I was gonna fly it the other day, guys. I really was. And then I got in it and I, I number one, I needed to update it. I didn't update it yet. I got in the old version and I just couldn't. I was halfway, got halfway through my setup and I was hearing myself breathe. So I just, I alt f would that. Then I tried to update it and then it crashed my SIM. Then I couldn't update it, said I need a new installer. It just, I hate saying things like that, but it makes me so frustrated when you have a new platform and then devs just wanna copy paste what they can and throw it in there and, and call it good, you know? Like, look at Phoenix, look at Just Flight. PMDG to to an extent. I mean, they really work to take advantage of the new platform. In my non-professional opinion, it felt like the Leonardo just was like, copy, paste, here you go. Now, the systems are awesome. The systems on the Leonardo are fantastic, but the way of doing things, like going to forums and all this stuff, it just is so FSX, like or P3D, like let's move on. Give me a nice app like Phoenix has. Let me launch the app before the sim starts or whatever, or have it auto launch. 
Let me do everything from one center. Don't make me go sign up here and go do this. Your camo shorts make up for the pink feminine beverage. I'm not wearing my camos today, though, Scott. I got, I got black shorts on. It'll have to do. Why couldn't that 7-2 take off? Jeremy, I don't know what happened. I, I would imagine it was uh, over a gross overload. Or maybe it wasn't even a gross overload. It just they didn't run their takeoff calculations properly. Maybe they weren't configured or maybe they could have done a different flap setting. I don't know. There's a lot There's a lot that could cause that to happen. The airplane obviously got airborne and, and flew away. So I'm just, I don't know. It's a, it is interesting to me though, Jeremy, that they were in that predicament. All right, introduce the stutters now. That was all right. Stop using unnecessary runway. All right, let's do our flight control check. Full up, full down, neutral, full left. Full right, a neutral, supposed to be 0.2 down. That is set. Auto brakes, max. Takeoff config is checked. That's on, that doesn't move. Everything else is set. Are we set on the overhead? We are, lights are set. Everybody. How long was I talking with my mic off? Did I just accidentally hit it? Was I just talking with my mic off for like the last minute? I hope I wasn't. All right, here we go. We already have more likes than viewers. You guys are absolutely awesome. So we're just going to get out of here. We're going to spool them up 50 yogas in chat. Let's go down to wherever we're going. Andreas antebellum parabellum thing. Here we go. Yoga. Oh, yeah. All right, now I'm actually going to pay attention because last time we got real close to the end here. All right, Mantoga SRS nav. Auto thrust is blue. Accelerating uphill at 13,000 feet. This is crazy. Look at this. I feel like the brakes are on. 80 knots. Thrust set. Well, that's not the right call. 80 knots. 100 knots. Thrust set. Checked. B1. Get hard hold the center line. Rotate. Positive rate, gear up. Golly. Nav. Get ready to enjoy this. Look at these views, guys, coming out of here. Look at this terrain. absolutely wild okay here is our five dme mark we're already above 13.7 we could start the right hand turn but here's the thing we're gonna do autopilot on this because it's just we have to enjoy these views we have to enjoy these views so we'll go autopilot one we're gonna go into climb i'm actually gonna i'm gonna keep it uh mct for a minute here help us accelerate i kind of want to change the sim time of that too Let's do like a four. There we go. All right, I'm gonna turn the sim way down. Listen to the, or look at this. That is awesome. How awesome is that? Jeez. I wanna go here. Screenshot, left windows print screen. Unreal. Oh, I got a little asymmetrical there. There I did. All right, let's go in the thrust climb. 
Thrust climb, climb auto thrust. VFE next, let's go flaps one. I'm gonna turn the sim back up a little bit. Just enjoy this departure. There it is, Bolivia in the hills. Robert S., thank you for the continued support, my friend. He says, are you happy with the new setup and the Phoenix? Robert S., I could not be happier, my friend. Could not be happier. Thank you for your continued support as a member. But I am absolutely loving it, man. Absolutely loving it. All right, so we actually have that 200 knot restriction, which I find interesting. And you can get into above 190, so I'm going to leave. I don't know. It's like when you go SB to go flaps up here. I'm going to try something for science. I know we're supposed to be at 200 knots, but if I go to 209, I should get a flap retraction, and I want to see what our climb rate does. Come on. Come on, where's that auto retract? I think it's 210. trying to trick the airplane to go there we go so now look all right so now our flaps are coming up we're going to leave the slats out though this should really this should really help us in the climb out here all right so we got our slats out now we're climbing that's neat there's 18,000 feet we'll go ahead and set standards scds for you me and the jump seater one two and three are set well it's not really set down here but we don't we don't need to i guess i'll do it was it 1013? So now we're out of 18,000. Look at that climb rate, though. I wonder if these guys do that in real life. Kind of just edge it up to get those flaps to auto retract. There we go. In the turn, baby. I need to talk to a uh, Aerosky pilot or anybody who's flown out of this airport in real life in the Airbus be curious is that 200 knots that this 200 knot restriction here is interesting at or above 19,000 feet so we're at or above 19 right now I wonder if they get speed relief on that frequently or not all right let's go ahead and go flap zero after takeoff checklist oh there you go with the reflection on the wing The green stab paint really helps on the climb. <laughs> do I have a tool for cabin airline announcements? No, I do not, Andres. I do not. I believe there is one called PACX. P-A-C-X. I mean, because, so if I'm clean here, yeah, a green dot is two, 218 or 212. I mean, it's, this situation is interesting to me. Climb, baby, climb. Self-loading cargo would do announcements. There you go. That's another good one. I have my own announcement pack in the fly-by-wire. Yeah, or just find the fly-by-wire. Fly-by-wire has a great announcement pack. Yeah, what a beautiful climb out. Let's go back to regular view here. Kind of want to watch this turn. Gibraltar approach when? Ooh, maybe when we get back into Europe, man. What a beautiful climb out, though. This is probably my favorite part about flying the Phoenix, this aft wing view, because we don't have IEs, so I could care less about looking at CFMs out the window. But the wing, the Phoenix A320 wing is awesome. 
I mean, it looks like the real thing. That is legit look like the real thing right there. Looks like we got some monkeypox on the window here. I thought it was COVID at first, but I think this is monkeypox now. Here we go. Here's that little differential roll spoiler turn. Face cam? Ah! Uh, come meet me in Houston at FS Expo, my friend. Alright, there's our 200 knots. Let's manage it. It wants to go all the way to 80. We're not going to take it all the way to 80, though. We'll go ahead and turn the APU off. That can come off. I'm going to leave the high elevation on until we get below 8,000 feet or so here. Because this is still blinking red. So I'm going to leave that on until our cabin comes down. So if you can look at here, you can see if you do any other normal takeoff, your cabin is should be climbing in the climb out. But this is definitely a unique scenario when you take off this high. So the cabin is descending at 350 feet per minute while the aircraft is climbing. Pretty interesting to see that. Aerosky 357 cleared present position direct to Pugat. Present position direct to Pugat for Aerosky 357. Boom. Love it. Love it. B1 doesn't actually have a face. He's just a set of disembodied hands that only appear in Tiller and Throttle Camp. Exactly, Steven. Cardis says that's Christie's COVID all over the windows. That's very true. It might be. Callum, yeah, the flex are awesome. Cap, uh, Captain, the windows on the emergency exit section are smaller than the regulars. That is correct, Diego. That is correct. They have little, uh, almost look like portholes. All right, so now that we are in the green with the ECAM, cabin descending at a 94.5, theoretically, if I turn this off, we shouldn't get any ECAMs. It's going to flash at us because it's approaching a limit. So standard Airbus, Airbusism here is when you have a flashing green item on the ECAM or upper ECAM, lower ECAM, wherever it may be, if it's flashing at you in green, that means you're approaching a limit. It doesn't mean that you're over a limit, but you are approaching one. So that's why that's flashing in green. Now, if it's red, now you've exceeded a limit or amber, and you will probably get an ECAM. 99% of the things on here that turn red or amber will produce an ECAM, but flashing green does not. Another instance of flashing green that I've seen that's fairly common, well, not so much anymore because Pratt's got it figured out, but back when the Pratt & Whitney uh, Neo engines came out, the 1100s, is that what they are, 1100, yeah. Uh, the vibes, you would see the high vibes start to creep up and they would start flashing in green. I forget what the limit is on the ECAM, but uh, there would be pretty common that you would actually be flying around with, vibe, with flashing green vibes on your lower ECAM when the Pratts first came out, they first started working on the Neos. Uh, they would they put them into like maintenance track items, so we'd have to ride it up, uh, but maintenance would track it. And essentially it came down to, well, if it's in the green, it's in the green, you're fine. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to reduce power. You don't have to do anything else. You just sit there and look uncomfortable, hoping that you don't sling a blade and, and lose an engine. But that's kind of, <laughs> that's kind of pretty much gone to by the wayside now. They've got them figured out that Pratt's are pretty reliable but yeah when they first came out and I said this on stream before is uh, when the, the Neos first came out first landed in the U.S. there was not a takeoff that I did without my high vibration checklist out and ready to go like I didn't even have the departure procedure up I had the high vibration checklist out and ready to go because it was pretty common positive rate gear up ding high vibe and you'd have to do the ECAM pull the power back essentially pull the power back to get the vibes away and then you're running the thrust lever asymmetry thing so you got to deal with that, but it was very common for a while there. Christy, exactly. You sound like my old cargo maintenance. Is it in the red? No. Then you're good to go. Exactly. That's how it runs, man. That's, that's the difference between owning your airplane, like having your own airplane that you may fly personally and working for an operator because we all have, every pilot has a personal limit, right? So if I had my own airplane, Say so I had my own Piper Chieftain, and I, I noticed my prop governors were kind of unstable on takeoff, riding full power, like I was getting that momentary overboost or something, whatnot. I would probably start looking at getting some maintenance on it or taking it apart, seeing what's wrong. In the operator world, where you actually are working for somebody, 
90% of the time it's going to be like, is it in the green? Yeah, you're good to go. doesn't matter what you feel. If it's in the green, the airplane is good. You're going. So that's kind of the same situation there with those high vibes flashing in green. There's not much you can do about it except sit there and look at it and think about contingencies. All right, we're 27.8, climbing to 3.80. Let's go ahead and do another check here of all of our systems. Cabin temps are good. Cruise, well, that shouldn't be popping up. It kind of does this weird. Pressurization is good. We're pressurizing, at least. Electrical is good. Hydraulics are good. This is normal here for the green system. With the gear up in the well, you're going to have low pressure there in the green a little bit. That's totally normal. Fuel is balanced. APU is off. We looked at that. Door page is good. 1800 PSI. Beautiful. Wheel page. Everything looks nice and cool. Flight controls. Everything looks nice and cool. Awesome. We'll enjoy some more wing views here until we get to cruise, and then we will uh, go outside. Let's see if I can find some little ambiance. What should we listen to today? This first song I clicked on, apparently, this is like Captain Canada's song, right? I think. Yeah, we can't listen to that. We'll get a copyright strike. I literally just picked the first song that was on the recommended. It says, for your recommended YouTube channel. APU is off. Should be off. Let me check. APU is off. Landing lights are on. Jeez, come on. You guys are all fake pilots in chat. No one told me all my lights were on. I was so busy. You know how loud that would be with those landing lights extended out there doing 8 mock? Freaking airplane was like... <laughs> yeah, we're doing 8 mock at 31,000 feet. Those lights would probably be half bent. Maintenance is going to look at them when we get into uh, Chile and they're going to be like, why are the landing lights so jacked up? Well, sorry, I left them on at 8 mark. My bad. Boy Onesie says, frustrated Brazilian pilot here with no scam to fly. Good looks with your streams, man. Very professional stuff. Thank you. Boy, thank you, man. I appreciate you stopping by, man. Sorry you're frustrated. No scam to fly. Not quite sure what that means. Maybe you're out of no no uh, no flights to do. But welcome on board, man. Glad to have you here. The only fake pilot is me. I know, Christy. I know. I'm curious. You're going Antofagasta instead of Kalama. Uh, Francisco, I'm going to. Where are we going? What's it say on the thing? We're going to SCFA. Did I mess that up? Let me look at Sky Vector. I planned it on Sky Vector. No, SCFA. Yeah, that's where we're headed. Which is, yeah, is that Anto? Well, the airport says Andre Sabella, SCFA. I guess the VOR is Anto Fagasta. I don't know if I'm saying that right at all. But it's literally just an airport I picked on the coastline. I said, hey, this looks cool. Let's fly there. And that'll put us in range for about a 600 mile flight south to we have to go to uh santiago chile and then that'll be about as far south as we go so we're going all the way down to santiago and then i'm gonna need we'll probably go into uh east from there what's that Ooh, scfc center uh-oh uh-oh 128.3 i'm a little nervous i hope they speak english down here 128.3 Yeah, so we're landing at sea level after taking off at 13,000 feet. Kind of crazy, huh? Uh, okay, let's see what happens here. Godspeed. I don't know why I'm nervous. What is that? We're Aerosky, right? Is that our call sign? Christy, are we Aerosky? I think we're Aerosky. Who is this? SCFZ Center? I don't even know what to call them. 
Center, good afternoon. Narrow sky, 357, 34, 5. Climbing flight level 380. We are direct to Pugat intersection. Out of sky, uh, 357. Uh, Iggy get radar, very good evening, sir. Uh, squawk 1001, please. Squawk 1001 for Aero Sky 357. Good evening. It's a little loud. What I mean is, you must know someone really well to get a job. Aero Sky 357, uh, you are radar contact. Climb flight level 380. Uh, flight direct to Enluz, Echo, November, Lima, Uniform Sierra. All right, uh, climate file 380, direct to Enluf, Echo, November, Lina, Lima, Sierra? Now, what was it? Uh, it's Echo, November, Lima, Uniform, Sierra. Ah, Enluf, uh, direct, uh, present position, direct Enluf for AeroSky 357, thank you. Ah, it's and that's Sky 357, right that there. is correct. You can uh, set up the Enluf for Alpha arrival and expect the Arnav Yankee runway 19er. All right, we'll expect Arnav Yankee 19er and the Enluf uh, 1 arrival for AeroSky 357. Right, yeah, so just to confirm, it's the Enluf 4 Alpha. Enluf 4 Alpha for Aerosky 357. All right, RNAV 1-9-er, and we're doing... And Centric Aerosky 658, turn bound to Enluf Impact Intersection. Enluf 4 Alpha. Aerosky 658, Santiago Radar, very good evening. Uh, set squawk 1002, please. All right, Enluf 4 Squawk Alpha. 1002, Aerosky 658. Insert. Hey, look at that. We're doing Airbus things. I don't know. I feel like we've been flying. So I've, I literally thought I was over no man's land out here. And then the radar guy comes on and we got traffic on the radar. Cool. Absolutely love it. Yeah, six, five, eight. You are radar Absolutely contact. love it. Let me like turn him down a little bit. Zero. Proceed direct to Woodell. Victor, Uniform, Romeo, Echo, Lima. Cool. He said Arnav Yankee. Thank you, Drake. What did I load up? Arnav Yankee, After that, Yankee, you can yeah. expect the Woodell. Echo arrival and uh, Arnav Yankee approach, runway 28. Arnav Yankee approach. Echo and, uh, Arnav Yankee. Let me look at some charts here. Let's take a look at this so we don't have it all messed up. You should start your own, <laughs> your own airline called Gringo Air. Oh my gosh. I would do it, totally do it, Jeff. It's because the Gringo always delivers, my friend. The Gringo that always delivers. All right, arrival and loof. Uh, oh, that's right. It's on this one here. And we're going direct to Enlus. We're going to do this. Pucked out above 8,000. Cool. All the way down to Rim Erky. And then that's going to set us up for the Arnav Yankee now. One niner. Arnav Yankee. One niner. We'll pin that as well. From Erky. Beautiful. Okay. So... Arnav 1-9-er, Enluf, approach via Erky. Insert that. We'll go to plan mode. We're leveling at 380. We'll get the seatbelt sign off here momentarily. Let's take a look. Look at that. Beautiful. Love it. Arc mode. We'll put, zoom this out to about 80 miles. Get the seatbelt sign off. Let them run. Let's hop outside for a minute. And enjoy some views. Which side should we be on? Ooh, this side with the mountains. Oh, yes. There it is. There's the view. Hopping over to Rio at some point. Yes. Yeah, the Chileans, Chileans speak good English. Absolutely. This guy's got fantastic English. I understand him better than Detroit controllers. We are Airbusing. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I know Flight Deck to Sim said he's moving house right now or something. That's why he hasn't been streaming. I honestly think I'm going to start the rumor. I honestly think he's in training on the Airbus. A little birdie told me he's on training in the Airbus. He's not actually moving house. He's, uh, he's going for an Airbus type ride right now. He's going to be captain on the 321 Neo. But you didn't hear that from me.
Anofagasta radar. Cool. That's what it is. Agreed. He's soon to become an easy jet pilot. Yeah, that's what I heard. He's going to be an easy jet pilot, too. <laughs> Jeez. He's in the level D sim right now. I actually, he sent me a message on Discord. He showed me a picture of him in the Airbus level D sims for easy jet. So, you, that, I cannot supposed to tell you though, but you got to keep it a secret. They speak English in the truck. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna get myself in trouble. It's about time flight tech to sim upgraded to a real aircraft. Hey, Blue Bear, I, you said it best, my friend. I couldn't agree more with you, man. Couldn't agree more with you. Let's see if I can eat some lunch here. <laughs> yeah, Danny, YouTube can, you keep, can keep secrets. I think my wife can keep a better secret than uh, the YouTube community can. It is lunch for me, Time Lapse Gaming. It's 1.43. It's actually lunch and breakfast. I had a... <laughs> we had a... We had a... We partied a little bit hard last night. And uh, didn't really have all that much breakfast. It was kind of like a, a late brunch for me. Sounds like a vending machine sandwich. No, it's a poke bowl. Pretty good, actually. Have I ever flown a Boeing in real life? I have not flown a Boeing. The closest yoke-driven aircraft to a Boeing I've flown is the Embraer 190. Ooh, the 190, 195. Great airplane. Really hoping we get a nice E-Jet for Microsoft. Really hoping for one. Hey, V1. I want to take a second to say thank you for all you do for the community. Your passion and expertise helped me as of today become a private pilot a couple hours ago. I got food in my mouth, but Javier0317, dude, that is awesome, man. Bank angle check, right back at you. Positive rates in chat from Mr. Javier. You got your, your uh, private pilot today a couple hours ago. Very, very awesome to hear, man. Welcome. Welcome to the brotherhood that is aviation, my friend. And may it bring you many, many, many awesome memories throughout your rest of your life, your career, whatever you may do with it. You know, if you just stay at PPL or if you pursue airlines in the future. Very awesome, man. Very awesome to hear. Congratulations. And thank you for your donation, by the way. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. And it's very kind of you to, uh, to say what you said about me. So I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. That says, that's, uh, those are the messages that I really, they're a really big part of why I do what I do is when you guys come in and say, hey man, I, you helped me with this or you know, you sparked some motivation in me and I went and did this or that or X, Y, Z and it's really awesome to see it come to, uh, come to fruition for you guys. So congratulations again, Javier. Thank you, sir. Aaron Hastings, yeah, the new X-Craft E-Jet for X-Plane 12. I've been monitoring that. I've been monitoring that. I'm very curious to see... Uh, to see what they bring forward i would love to i would love it i, I would love a good e-jet i really would you know I, I think it's kind of an airplane that's kind of slipped under the radar because we never really had a, a really solid one you know we had the version one was all right and the ssg but it was a little bit outdated from the beginning i think uh but i would love uh, the, the v2 it looks looks promising i'll say that fighter holic you want to get a ppl one day don't give up on your dreams man stick with it Stick with it, like Javier did. Aerosky 658, when ready, descend initially flight level 200. 
All right, let's see what we got going on there. A company massage. Too steep path ahead. That's interesting. We'll deal with that when we get to it. Um, Chris Stuper, I see your question there in chat. Where are you taking off from? Is it every single takeoff? There could be a couple of reasons uh, for that. Aerosky Ops. Send for 66 minute delay code. Oh, this ought to be fun. Uh, allocates per blah, blah, blah. Free text of Apple. Okay, so they want to know why I was late. Uh, let's see here. ADC delay. Hmm. How many minutes were we? 66 minutes or something like that. Delay code. Delay code, you say. Hmm. Blame it on the rampers. Engineering delays. <laughs> System reset. Uh, ground equipment, tug broken, operational delays, fueling, maneuvering miscellaneous. Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to do. Uh... <laughs> New defect. We'll do other. <laughs> uh, swarm. We're going to do other. And uh, we had a. We had a. Uh, what did we have? We had a forward smoke, right? Cabin smoke. So. Oh, who do we blame it on? We'll just blame it on the FO. It's always a safe one. We'll just blame it on Phantom 320. Phantom 320 could not leave lav on time. Send it. <laughs> Delay code stuck in the air. Oh, man. <laughs> wouldn't put his reefer out. That's what I should have done. Phantom would, wouldn't, wouldn't stop smoking in the cabin. No Phantom 320 code, sadly. A fa yeah, I know. We need, a, we need a, a PHN code for Phantom. Matt, um, Blue Bear said... Was good to listen to last week's Blue Experience stream. Black Box 7-Eleven was very complimentary. Blue Bear. I was absolutely floored at uh, Black Box's comments. I didn't even know he really knew who I was. I watched him. I actually, because of him, I got the FS Lab, so I didn't even know it really existed. I was kind of naive in, the, in that market. Um, but I actually, I saw his video on YouTube a long, long time ago. I think, I'm pretty sure it was an FSX video where he had a dual engine out. And I started watching it. And I'm like, man, this guy knows what's up. So I was because I was getting ready to go into do into the sim, do some recurrent stuff. So I, I saw that video and I got the FS Labs and I watched a couple more of his videos. But yeah, he's absolutely fantastic. I heard what he said there at the end. I would love, 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 love to do a podcast with him. And I believe Blue Games and XP72 are going to set that up at some point uh, to do the Blue Experience with Black Box 711. Uh, that would be really, really cool. I could sit there and ask that guy questions all day just about European ops and how things are done over there, comp kind of compare and contrast, and just to, to talk with him, bring up the old war stories like he mentioned, you know. I mean, that dude's been flying longer than I have, definitely. So he definitely has more more stories to tell. I, I would love to just sit back and, and uh, have a bourbon with him or just sit there and talk and, and exchange stories. But I hope that does come to fruition here pretty soon. be absolutely awesome. The... Uh, the uh, what did he say? The uh, uh, origami. He was a master at origami. The whole bit he talked about when we had paper charts. That is something that like a lot of people have forgot. And if you weren't flying at that time, it was such a headache. It was like this big looming thing over your head every time you had a revision or if you couldn't find your right chart. Like, did I miss a page? Where is this airport page? just it was such a big part of our lives as a commercial pilots when we had paper charts and i was thinking you know it'd be fun to have a little podcast with him just call it the masters of origami because yeah you just 
I remember doing revisions up front. We really weren't supposed to do them up front, but I would do revisions on on uh, crews at sometimes doing stuff. Just you couldn't help it. Everybody did it. I mean, you take you get ready to go to the report for the airplane, you get slapped a, you know, fifteen hundred page revision. You got to do. What are you going to do? Delay the flight, or just take the packet with you and then do it later? So you would just take the whole packet. You've got your charts, um, but you have to get them all set up. So it was uh, it was an interesting time. It was an interesting time. I remember one time I opened an in route chart, and I I couldn't get it open all the way, and I was like kind of fiddling with it. And I was trying to find a changeover point on this airway, and I remember it was some, it was kind of a unique one. It wasn't right in the middle because of the service interruption. Uh, so we, it was like this unique changeover point. I was kind of looking for it, and I got frustrated with the chart, the in route chart, and I just kind of flipped it open a little bit harder, ripped it right down the middle, right where the line was that I needed to see the frequency and the or the distance for the changeover point. And I was like, "Are you freaking kidding me?" so frustrated man but it was just and you're, you're folding out these charts in your lap flying around knocking the autopilot off and just it was a different time man different time now you just hit update boom you're good to go but revisions on the 7.6 were brutal i can imagine captain no like you can imagine man <laughs> jeremy says i bragged about you to a 30-year check captain called you mr airbus the airbus captain's captain <laughs> Jeremy Harvey, that's very kind of you, man. Thank you for that. I'm just, uh, I am, I don't see myself as any, anybody special or anything like that. No, I just, um, I just try to do my job and, and uh, get home safe with everybody else. But yeah, it's, uh, it's awesome, man. I love it. I love being on the Airbus. I love talking about Airbus to other people, to people who don't know Airbus, to even people who know Airbus. And people who have been on the Airbus before me, like I like talking to some really senior guys that have been, you know, were on the Airbus when they were first coming out. Like, oh, I remember when we first got our Airbus and uh, this would happen all the time. Like it's, it's really interesting to see how the Airbus has changed over the years and how modifications and revisions come out. And yet here we are, we're, we're launching 320 Neos that are coming out brand new off the factory line. It's still an Airbus, but man has a lot changed. I would love to see you and Phantom do shared cockpit engine fail stream. Matt Warren, I would absolutely love to do that. I'm just waiting for there to be some shared cockpit compatibility. And we're going to be on it, man. We're going to be absolutely, we're going to be on it. finished eating here. I had to scroll back. I saw a message. Um, Who's that? In the name of Chilean Virtual ACC, we welcome you to Chilean Virtual Airspace. Hope you enjoy ATC and your flight at the end of the world. <laughs> welcome V1. Francisco Salazar. Is that you I'm talking to on frequency down there? Thank you so much, man, for hopping on mine. You guys are awesome. Really appreciate that, Sam. And this is my first time ever being in Chilean airspace on stream and pretty much ever. So, it's it's awesome to have you step on. Thank you so much for the ATC services, sir. Mohammed Dal, Mohammed Dalji, Mohammed. I'll just say Mohammed. Thank you so much, man. Twenty dollars super chat dono. Much appreciative of that, sir. Says AV1. What do you mainly fly these days? Three twenty. Cheers, Mohammed. Thank you so so much for that big dono. Twenty dollars. I appreciate you. It depends. Are you talking about in the sim or in real life? In real life, I'm flying nineteens, twenty, and twenty ones. Most recently, it's been a lot of three twenties. I actually flew a Neo on my last trip and flying a lot of 320s. I flew a 319 also on my last trip. I haven't been flying the 319s a lot. I, I don't know if they're keeping those in a different part of the country right now. But I did fly one 319 and it was uh, it was not happy. It was a little, a little tired to say the least. Had some mechanical issues. But I typically, it's a most, most of it is a 320. I think I'd have to look at the numbers, but I think... Numerically speaking, our my particular fleet is has more 320s than any of the others, 19s and 21s. So it's more common to get the 320, but we do fly them all. <laughs> Captain No Nike says paper read top charts were actually kind of fun. Lots of opportunity to show your artistic side. <laughs> I can imagine, dude. I can imagine.
Is it hard to learn to become an ATPL? Some say you become depressed while learning. Um, I wouldn't say it's hard per se, but uh, you have to be you have to be on it, man. You gotta be you gotta be ready to study. So you know, the more you study, the more you're gonna get out. Oh, look at this view right here. You know, the more you study, the more you stay ahead of everything, you're gonna be all right. But you have to remember to take breaks. You can't do it all at once. You're not gonna learn everything in one sitting. So you have to have to pace yourself. But it can be very demanding. It absolutely can be very demanding. It's a lot of information. That's why I always tell students, uh, well, when I used to be full-time instructor, like you gotta pace yourself or else you're gonna burn. Number one, you can burn out. You can suffer from burnout or you can, you get frustrated with yourself. You get down on yourself because you feel like you're not learning enough information. You have to pace yourself, especially when you start getting into the ATPL theory. Now I know Europe does it completely different than the US, but like doing the uh, like ATPL theory and stuff is it's crazy that they do that so early on. So uh, yeah, you got to pace yourself. Nah, that's a beautiful shot right there. Is this real life? What were some quirks of early 320s? Uh, what was it? The ELAC resets after engine start? I can't remember. ELAC or FAX? It's been, it's been a while. Oh, man. I literally just got avocado all over my shirt. I think that's avocado. Son of a... I like this shirt. Oh, well. Uh, <laughs> sorry. It's still, it's still eating my lunch here. But, um, yeah, doing the flight control resets after engine start, that's an old quirk. Uh, a lot of random ecams. Actually, what you see here with the Phoenix, like on power up, you get all those spurious ecams on a power up of the airplane. That really doesn't happen anymore. Like the software loads have changed so much and it's much newer. You really don't get any spurious warnings. You get the FWC beep when it comes online, at least in the newer aircraft, but you don't really get any ecams. Uh, one thing that's changed a lot over the years, and I think this is dependent on and I could be wrong on this, but I think it depends on the actual physical mod the aircraft has for something in wing, I think it's wing leak detection. So every airline is different too. Even in the US, I've seen we all have different limitations, but if the ground temps are above a certain temperature, you have to leave the flaps at position one uh, when you shut down or else you can get a, I think it's a bleed leak fault or wing leak fault, I can't remember. And over the years, it used to be like, I think it was like started out being 30 C and then it was like 40 C, then it was 35 C and now it's back to 40 C, at least for us. But I know just in the US alone, like uh, JetBlue has a different one, American has a different one, Spirit has a different one. Everybody has a different limitation on when they leave the flaps out after shutdown or before shutdown. So that would be something that you'd have to talk to an engineer on. But that's something that I've, I remember seeing revisions on. Um, what else is out there? I, I pack flow control, like temperatures, not being able to control the temperature is very good. Like having it all the way cold and it's blowing a hundred degree air into the cabin because it's just like, it lost itself. You don't really see that too much anymore. Does that mean the chart light in the cockpit is, is the least used now? Absolutely, Matt, on the A-pillar, that light is hardly ever used. That's why you use the tray table. Exactly. I know I need a tray table. I really need a tray table mod. Maybe when I get my new desk, I'll have to see if I can get a tray table from maintenance. But can you get any broken tray tables I can have? Air bleed fault? Nah, that sounds right. Yeah, air bleed fault, Chris. It's a loop issue. Yeah, something with the fire detection loop. You're probably right, Chris. I'd have to look it up. But I haven't had one in a very, very long time, but I just I remember it was something like that. Hi, Captain. I am 16, want to be a pilot, but I'm worried that money will stop me from becoming a pilot. Brados, it is a huge financial financial burden. It really is. Uh, and gathering from what Black Box said, it's the same on in Europe as it is in, you know, at pretty much everywhere else. It's very expensive to get started. Uh, it's kind of unfortunate, but it's, uh, there are, if you're in the U.S. anyway, there are programs, there are ways to get around that. Outside of the U.S., it's very, very difficult if you don't have the money up front. But don't let it discourage you. Don't give up. Are we still... I mean, that is just... Oh, 
awesome. Those clouds. Thanks for all the couscous juice. Those are some epic streams. Absolutely, Jeff Feld. Thank you for posting that video and, and bringing my attention to that to begin with. All right. Out of sky, uh, 658, continue to descend flight level 130. Descend level 130, air sky 658. How far are we out? We got 160 uh, miles. Out of sky 658, via Malpo, you are cleared for Arnav Yankee runway uh, 28, QNH. Well, let's go ahead and start prepping for the arrival, shall we? SCFA. Bring the sounds up a little bit here. Let's do a weather request. What did I say? SCFA. Out of sky at 357, when ready, descend initially flight level 200. When ready, descend flight level 200, Aero Sky 357. All right, 200 is blue. We got a little bit ways to go. Send that out, return. We have another message here. Did I send it twice? Oh, ops. Oh, hold on. ADC received. All right, delay has been received. We blamed it on Phantom 320. Weather data, 190 at 9. Right down the pipe, 190 or 0 at 9 knots. Temperature is a 16. QNH is 1015. RNAV Yankee, 19. Let's go ahead and find our approach chart in the Navigraph. Looks right, clouds, looks left, no clouds, clouds, no clouds. <laughs> and I was trying to figure out which view to use there. All right, for the 1-9 RNAV Yankee, we got an LNAV minimum of 1180. Now, this is interesting. It's an MDA, which for us means we must do addition. We must add 50 feet to a straight LNAV. If it was a DA, we wouldn't have to add any additive. So 1180 plus 50 is our additive today. It's going to be 1230, right? Yeah, math. 1230 on the barrow. 12.30 is set. When ready, we'll descend flight level 200, which is coming up very soon. We will not need LS push buttons. We're going to do manual brakes, full reverse. 200 is set. And we'll put that in the yard in the SCFA. We'll put that in the progress page. 148 miles, 13 miles to the top of descent. Main Streets, member for 10 months, man. Thank you so much for your continued support. It says, uh, try to fly next plane, but Microsoft just looks too good. Yeah, it's, uh, it's insane, man. Look at this. Look at that down there. That's default Microsoft real-life juice coming at you. Thank you for your continued support, Main Streets. You're the best, man. And when ready, we'll go ahead and start down. Center Aerosky 357 is vacating the level 380 for flight level 200. Aerosky 357, Rocker, thank you. All right, mock descent is coming down. We'll put this in below mode. We're squawking 1001. That's in below, right? Yes, it is. TOD has been reached. Watch your ears. Oh my. Let's turn it down. Look at this. Look at this. So we got the water over here, the coastline. You can still see that terrain out there. This is, we already killed X-Plane, right? We're gonna to listen to this song too, let's go over here. Nope. I like this song. So loud out there. I just wanted to show you guys the look at these valleys coming in here. This is unreal. We buried X Plane on the last stream. X Plane 11. X Plane 11. But, I mean, we might have to bury it again on this arrival. What's your nickname? I suppose it isn't V1. I don't really have a nickname, man. Everyone here calls me V1. 
All right, we're looking good. We're coming down to 200 puck test at, eight or, at or above 8,000 feet. We don't need the LS push buttons. We're going to be R nav only looking for the brick and the stick, manual brakes, full flaps. Beautiful. This song is... I'm trying to get the volume not it's super loud. Faded by Uwe. I like this song. Get some of that green stab in your face. Nickname is Maverick. There you go. <laughs> Jeff says, when's the memorial for X-Plane 12? Uh, probably in the next 20 minutes. I'll tell you what, ma'am. I've been watching some of those developer updates. Ah. I don't know. I don't know, man. Let's just say this. I'm not even going to say it because I don't know. I got nothing against X Plane 12, and I really want it to be good. I want X Plane 12 to be the competitive sim with Microsoft. I want it to be. I want to get to the office when I'm ready to stream and be like, man, what am I going to fly today? I can fly like the 72, or I can fly the uh, Tolus A340. In X-Men 12, or do I fly the Phoenix in Microsoft? Like, where do like, I want to be able to have that debate in my head? What it's looking like is it's like, well, unless I have a bunch of ortho scenery for an area, I'm pretty much going to just fly Microsoft because I don't want to spend the time creating orthos and all this crap to make it look better. Which is sad. Uh, I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. You know, I might. I might. I might be an exclusive Orbix uh, X-Plane 12-er, you know? Wherever there's Orbix, sure, I'll fly. I'll fly. Wherever there's Orbix, I'll fly. But just take a look at that, folks. I mean, we're not even looking at terrain right now. And it's very possible that the X-Plane 12 could look like this. If X-Plane 12 lighting and clouds look just like what you're seeing right now on the screen, okay. You know what? Then I'm like, all right, we're going to have... I'm going to be debating in my head which stream should I fly when I get to the office. But if it's not this good or better, very difficult for me to get excited about it. I'm not saying I'm not going to get it or not going to try it. We're talking about levels of excitement, and I just, I don't know. x 12 is going to have as much eye candy as FS2020 from what I've heard. Yeah, that's kind of what I've heard too. When, once Microsoft gets CFD physics and scenery devs can optimize things for real airports, it'll be over. I would be inclined to agree with that, Tony. X-Plane is good for practicing, but overall Microsoft 2020 is something else. I agree, Jane. And I'm probably going to do... You, I don't think we've seen the end of X-Plane 11 on this channel just yet. Because as I get ready for my sim sessions next uh, in two weeks, I will probably be doing some uh, check ride prep in X-Plane, in the Tolus. Just because I love the way that I can manipulate the failures in that. I can really set up a nice check ride profile. So... If you want to see X-Plane 11 on this channel again, you still have hope because it, it, it might come in the form of a, a checkride preparation stream, which is a testament to X-Plane 11. I mean, it is, it as of right now, it does have a superior flight model. I will not deny that. Um, and the airplanes, particularly the Tolus, in my opinion, are very good, very easy to manipulate for training purposes. For like, I love the way I can select the faults, uh, all these different faults. I like how I can run the ECAMs. And I, I want to compare some ECAMs. I'm going to compare some from the Phoenix to the Tolus because I know Phoenix does run some older software here with ProSim. Like the way that some of the ECAMs are is a little bit older than what I may be used to. So I'm going to have to do some comparing and contrasting. But outside of that, I mean, shoot, I, I, I brought it up in that one stream uh, a couple, couple streams ago where I said that like at what point does an environment in a simulator outweigh a flight model edge. And when I say edge, I mean like, it's not glaringly better. And I don't think when Microsoft gets CFD, I, I think that gap is even gonna be further. I don't know if it'll be better than X-Plane 12, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna narrow that gap between flight model different differences between the two sims. So, at what point does an environment that you fly in 
become more important than the flight model itself. And I say this because, you know, as for me, when I fly, I want to be completely immersed, right? I want to feel like I'm actually, I want to get in the, I want to get in the juice. I want to feel like I'm really getting ready to fly. I can get motivated and get excited. I can, I feel like my streams are better when I'm excited okay, about yes, the stream. Continue to descent 4,500 Ferro Sky 357. Continue down to 4,500. So yeah, I feel like, you know, streams are better. I perform better for you guys when I'm excited and motivated about the flight that we're doing. And when I'm coming in to an approach and I can see a rain shaft at the end of the runway, we touch down and I'm basically clear VFR and then halfway down the rollout, I start having raindrops on my windows and now I'm gone to wet braking, wet action. Like that is an, a, that's part of the environment that brings the realism factor up for me. So, you know, also you guys saw it on what stream when we were circling into, uh, I think we were circling into the air uh, where we take off Cusco with Christy. Christy came in. He went missed. I had a nice VFR RNAV circle. His second approach coming in, it was at minimums. I mean, that's a changing environment that is so important. And I think it's it might go overlooked for a lot of people. We're so focused on the flight model, and I am too. I'm not trying to make excuses, but when we talk about realism, the environment is a huge part of realism. So to have that changing, adapting, and immersive environment does carry a lot of weight. Calamar, yeah, and you, Calamar, make a good point for the aircraft. They're absolutely right. There is a ton of airplanes on the X-Plane platform that I will need to fly again. You know, like, I need to fly my 7.2s. I need to fly my King Air 350. I need to fly the, uh, the Chief, Piper Chieftain. I'd love to do some more GA stuff with the Rep Sim Coders pack that's on it now. You know, those are, there's the 340, the 321 XLR, the 319. Like, I'm still definitely going to fly it for those airplanes. But, you know, when you look at the overall experience of a sim, it's like, geez, it's, it's hard to beat. Very hard to beat. Petrophy loves the Flight Factor C. Yeah, Flight Factor 320, right? I have too much money invested in X-Plane to walk away from it. I hear you, Mr. Martini. I hear you, man. It's... You got, I kind of look at it like buying a boat, you know, it's, you're never going to make money buying a boat, all right? What you're buying is an experience. And if you can afford that experience, you're going to be happy with it, but you're not buying it to make money. You're, you know, you go into it knowing I'm going to lose money on this, but I'm buying experiences. For me, I've had plenty of good experiences on X-Plane 11 and I'm, I'm content, you know, I feel like I got my money's worth. I got a lot of great hours, streams, videos. Now I'm looking forward to 12 and, uh, and the continuation of Microsoft, I really am. Fila 742, how could I forget that, Lauren? Exactly, cannot forget the Fila 74. Uh, Aaron, I don't think we have any okay, other media yeah, info on it. I, I don't, I, I'm the same, but I, I hear you though. Like, Thank you for how Bye. much information other than sprinklings? Yeah, we don't really have much more. All right, let's go ahead and focus here on landing. That sounds like a good song. We might come back to that. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. We are 19, 8, we got 10, 15. Puka are above 8,000 feet. We need to set 10.15 on the meter. Ding. There we go. 10.15 is set both sides. Seventeen eight. we're coming down. We're looking good. 320 knots. Let me get flight recorder out. If it flies, floats, or rent it. Fill in the blank. Exactly. Alright, that's coming over here. Flight recorder is ready. Gosh. Look at that. Getting ready for max juice here. Man, I haven't even drank all my refresher yet.
Danny says, although the 742 seems to be forgotten, or maybe not for really forgotten, but such a great aircraft. Not many people, streamers, fly longer flights where the 74 is good at. Yeah, that's the thing with the 74 is you really got to be dedicated for a long haul. If I had the sim at my house, you know, if I didn't have to come in and do it, then I think I would have done a lot more long haul streaming. But it's just it's kind of it's kind of a pain to do it with my situation, my setup. Kelly Simmer, what's up? Just in time for landing. Yes, you are, sir. Welcome on board. Look at that coastline, though. Where are those waves at? Can you see any waves down there? Hmm. This looks real. Do I like the Flight Factor or the Phoenix more? I like the Phoenix more. The Flight Factor has its own issues, man. It, I almost feel like the Flight Factor kind of went the other way. When it came out, it was pretty decent. Some stuff wrong with it. They fixed that slowly. Then the flight model got all wonky. And it's kind of been that way. I don't know. I don't know. It's not bad. It's just I prefer the Phoenix over the Flight Factor. How about flying our beloved New York Jets to the away games this fall? Going to some cool places next season. Hendrick might have to, man. Might have to. We might have to, my friend. What's going on with cancellations with airliners? Could you give us some insight? Well, here in the States, because uh, all the companies let everybody go during COVID, and then everyone took their retirements, early retirements, all that stuff. And now everybody wants to fly faster than anybody thought, and everything's full and sold out. Airlines sold tickets knowing they wouldn't be able to staff them, but they just did it to get the money. And now they're paying pilots like 300% because they can't get enough people to come to work. So they cancel what they can, and it's just kind of a it's kind of a madhouse right now. Kind of a madhouse. When are you gonna do a stream in a real flight that asks for likes to the passengers for takeoff? <laughs> Maybe on the next one, Andres. Maybe. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and select 250. We're going to activate and confirm the approach phase. We're going to get our Chinese speed brakes out there. Wing lights on. We'll leave the other lights off because we have... We have uh, ATC on. Let me get the tiller cam up. It's up bright. We're looking good. We'll get terrain on just in case. There we go. 300% pay, you say? Look, I'm no pro, but give me a USB port to plug in my TCA and I'll do what I can. <laughs> Aaron, I know, dude. If it were only that easy, it may be in the future. Who knows? It's kind of scary. I am using FS Realistic indeed, yes. Using the V1 profile. Oh yeah, when the IE engines release, Petrifi, uh, <laughs> I might fly the Phoenix for a, a week straight. All right, we're not technically clear for the approach yet, so we're not going to arm the approach yet. But we're coming down, we're on profile, we're descending to 4,500 feet, flight right, attendants, prepare for landing. Approach phase has already been activated. Cinco cuatro uno, that's 541, I know that. Oh, look at that screenshot, screenshot, screenshot. Look at that view. That looks real. That's straight out of the airplane. You are cleared Arnav Yankee, runway 19er, QNH 1015. Cleared Arnav Yankee, 19er, 1015 on the QNH for your Sky 37. All right, approach is on. Final blue app nav. We are cleared approach. Runway turnoff light is coming on. And we keep on coming down. Our missed approach altitude is 4,500 feet. So 4,500 is already set. We'll leave it there. Keep on coming down with 250 knots. That's fine. Oh, starting to nose over a little bit. God, that looks amazing. 
please don't cut the stream again, I know. 321 with IAE and wings will be stronger than jet fuel shots. <laughs> Where are you looking more out to? The 319 with IEs or the 320 with IEs? Or the 310 or the, or the IEs and the 320? 310 or the I, ooh. Danny, that's tough. That's really tough, because I would love to have a 310, have another airplane to fly in the sim. Really, really, really would love that. Ah, that's a tough one, 50-50, man. I'm 50-50. Yeah, I took a screenshot of that already. That's just a great shot. Like, I love doing this little GoPro view here as XP72 likes to call it. Speaking of, he will be streaming later tonight. I've got, I think I have it set up to uh, transfer you over, I think, after the stream ends. I can't forget what it's called, but. Gotta be the 310. Ah, Aaron, yeah, you know, it would be really nice to have another airplane to mix it up, but I don't know. Here's, here's, uh, here, I'll answer that question this way. If the IAE comes with its own engine model, like a new engine model for better performance and more accurate fuel and all that, then I want the IAE over the 310. If it's just a visual mod for right now, which I don't know if they're gonna do, but I would be totally okay with it just because I like the IEs, then I would prefer the 310. But I'm pretty sure Phoenix said that they're not gonna release the IEs until they have their own engines working correctly, so. We've got that to look forward to. Let's go ahead and get the speed brake out. We're going to slow to 210 knots here. We're going to try to stay on this app map profile. Oh my word. Screenshot. Screenshot. That's just stupid. Look at that. Do you know about the special 321 ground effect burble when you can just think about flaring and you basically just roll it onto the runway? Airplane has to be in the right spot. Yep, yep, Jeremy, I'm familiar with that. You just kind of roll her on, man. All depends on the approach, though. Depends on how good you flew the approach. If you're unstable, it's not quite that easy. But, yeah, 321, I think the 321 lands the easiest, if I were being honest. I'd go 321, 319, 320. 320 is actually the hardest one to really butter, unless it's a really light 319. A really light 319 is just hard to land smoothly. Screenshot folder is full. I did not fly the DC design Concord. No, I don't think I will. I don't think it's up to par with what I'm used to. Flap steer. Gotta love it. All right, there we go. Coming back to 180 knots, we'll go ahead and stow the speed brake. 180 knots, flaps two. We're on profile lap now. Let's get it. One cloud blocking my view of the runway. What's up with that? Well, that's right. We'll watch this view here. God, that's stupid. This view is stupid good. What about the wing flex? I... 10 for 10, best wing flex, I say it every stream, best wing flex, best wing model, best wing texture on any airplane of any sim, period. You're looking at it right now. How to fuel and balance caution, I didn't know how to correct it. How do you move fuel from right tank to left? Mr. Martini, real quick, uh, that's a great question. Basically, you want to take the uh, low side tank pumps off, so you want to go right to left, you would open the cross feed valve, turn these pumps off, and fly around like that. Once it was balanced, turn these pumps back on, then put the cross feed back to close. So basically, you want to put the low side tank pumps off with the cross feed valve open. When do you turn off the flight directors for RNAV? Prior to the decision or the minimum descent altitude, or depending on your company's SOP. That could be totally different. Could be MDA, could be 100 feet, could be 500 feet, could be 900 feet. It could, it could depend, but if to be safe, turn them off at the MDA. 
Can you crossfeed fuel in the sim? Yes, absolutely. I've done it a couple times on stream. If uh, Mr. Martini, I'm sorry, man. If I would have, if you would have asked that a little bit earlier, we could have done a quick example here on stream. But essentially, that's what you do: get the transfer open and turn the low side pumps off. That way, you burn fuel from the uh, high side. Yep, you got it, Mr. Martini. All right, runway's in sight. Feels weird landing at sea level. What happens if you get the crossfeed valve closed and you turn the pumps off? Well, then you're just going to gravity feed. Airplane will still run just fine. Engines will still run. They'll still burn fuel. It'll just be gravity feed. What a shot. Okay, recording is on. I'm going to turn the FO's flight director off. And he hasn't cleared me to land yet, but we're not switching to tower, so I'm just going to turn this on anyway. And we're going to turn everything off. We're going to hand fly this. So, birds on. Give me the birds in chat. I'll pilot off. Flight director's off. And manage speed. Auto thrust is off. I don't got you. Three five seven. Wind one nine or zero degrees. Nine knots. Runway one nine or clear to land. Runway one nine or clear to land for Sky three fifty seven. Yeah, I know. Auto thrust is off. Auto thrust off, please. Thank you. Jeez. Need to clear that. There we go. VFE next minus ten. Flaps three. And also flaps full. We never turn the seatbelt signs on. Fake pilot. We are cleared to land. Thrust is off. Autopilot's off. My airplane. Stand them up about 50% on those One N1s. Five. Close to it, that'll give you a good bench base baseline. Seems like I need a little bit less today. All right, runway is in sight. Landing. Spoiler is armed. Looks like it's at a slight angle here. That approach is not 100% straight in. So I'm on the glide path. Curious to see 100 above. how this turns out here. The pappies. 500. They look all right. Stable, clear to land. Minimum. Self straight with the runway there. There's two whites, two reds. Welcome to Chile, folks. Favorite part about being a CFI is seeing students pass their check rides, man. Be nice if we got on the center line, though, huh? I'm flying over here like Christian. He always likes to land on the left side of the runway. Spoilers. Reverse is green. Annual brakes, 70 knots, idle reverse. Yeah, we had the double five, <laughs> five, five, a little bit of a float. I don't even know what was it. It seemed a little bit firm on the shake. I might tweak that a little bit. I'm not sure what the numbers were. We'll analyze the replay as always. Float factor. I know that's what I get for making fun of Christy. Yeah, the pappies are the pappies in Microsoft are like really weird, man. <laughs> Uh, 
Arcaya 357, welcome to Antofagasta. You can taxi via Bravo, Sierra, correction, Bravo, Alpha, and Sierra to stand of your choice. Thank you for flying. All right, Bravo, Alpha, Sierra, stand of our choice. Thank you for the ATC for uh, Aerosky 357. Appreciate you. All right, we're reconfiguring because it's fun to do. We'll keep the lights on, though. Um, Bravo Alpha Sierra. I don't really have any runway or taxiway signs. 10-9, I think someone else has taken off. Oh, yeah, there goes another Aero Sky. Taking off in the sunset. Let me stop recording. Oh, that's cool. There goes another Aero Sky. Oh, here's... Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the second burial of X Plane 11 is upon us. Look at that. The second burial of X Plane 11 is upon us with the sun setting, and I'm probably going past Bravo. Is this Bravo? Uh, Bravo Alpha. Oh, I turned on Bravo. I'm on Alpha. He said Sierra? Shoot, we're just going in here. This looks like a gate area. That was an epic shot for sure. Trying to get back over there and watch it, but I keep trying to taxi the airplane and find that sunset. There it goes. Man, more likes and viewers already. You guys are absolutely awesome. Thank you so much. Man, there she goes. Right. Let's uh, let's go ahead and find us a gate right here. How about not? Uh, we already missed that one. Let's go over here. Let's reconfigure so we're ready for replay. We'll go flaps full. I'm just going to kind of speed us into the gate. We'll keep all our lights on so we don't have to listen to the tick, 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 the whole replay. X-Plane 11 is now 12 feet underground. <laughs> oh, ooh, that was a real hard erp. All right, brakes are set, and actually, you know what? I don't want to set them for replay. Let's go ahead and brakes release for replay. Flaps are down. Thank you so much for the ATC tonight into Fagasto Center Control. You guys are awesome. We'll disconnect from VATSIM, put you in replay cam. Let's see this juice, shall we? I'm just going to get the music playing now. We're going to watch the replay. I'll get the sail on because this is just too good to not watch with a little sail in the background. So I just want to take a quick moment to thank every single one of you guys who have uh, been with me to this today on this stream. It's been a long one. Thank you so much for hanging out with me in chat. Thank you for the donations. Thank you for the new subscribers. We are fastly approaching 30,000 subs, which is just, it's kind of mind boggling to even think about. We're only about 1,000, 2,000 away. So really cool. Uh, about 2,000 subs away, right? We're at 27.8 or something like that last I checked. So just awesome support. Can't thank you guys enough. Thank you, mods, for hanging out here with me on the channel today, keeping the chat in line. I'm probably not going to be back until next week, guys. I think we're going to be pretty busy over the weekend. We're going to be doing some real-world flying. I'm going to be doing some cooking on 4th of July. I'll be sure to post pictures in the food chat of the Discord. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Happy holidays if you're here for you know, the U.S. of A. celebrating our independence. Man, what a view. What a view. So you guys take care. Stay safe. Stay healthy. I'm the one. See us in chat. See ya.